Welcome one, welcome all to another week of the You Need a Hara podcast. And when me, when Nick hit me up, he goes, we got him again. And I was like, who? He goes, Sean. I was like, God damn, I thought it was going to be somebody really cool. No, Just I'm me. kidding. Sean, man, thank you for, for uh, being here. No problem. My pleasure. What else do I got to do on a Saturday night? <laughs> well, <Hang on>. Nick. <laughs> How are you, Nick? Uh, you know, man, I'm I'm I am surviving. I'm not thriving, it'd be a lie, but I'm I'm surviving. Tomorrow's the kids' birthday party, so that should be oh. yeah, you know, drop two hundred and fifty dollars <throat> target for <laughs> gifts, you know, just for yeah. him to get bored of them after like a month. But you know, cool, cool. He's gonna be three, so uh that's cool. Um, I don't know how you doing. It's been two weeks since we've done an episode. I'm good. Staying very busy. Staying very busy. Uh, I'd like to start this off, though, with Sean. Is that guy still bugging you to make those killer clown videos? No, he stopped. He's, I think I, I think he got the hint. You know what's hmm. crazy? That whatever that channel was, they pulled those videos of you. Collective complaint. Yeah, um, Collection it's complaint? A, yeah, it was called Gemmer was the company. I guess they completely went under. And they just pulled all their content off of YouTube. No idea why, but it sucks because those were really cool episodes. Those guys put a lot of work into it. And they had a lot of other really good content. Um, a guy named Sean Decker, um, who used to write for Fangoria and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, um, we shot, I think, three other episodes that never even aired. So... They were and nice. I think I've been meaning to talk to him about it. Like what the, it, you know, contractual, like, I mean, what if they just got put up on my channel, you know, until <laughs> we were asked to have them taken down, you know, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to hit him up about that. You know, what if I had copied them myself and, you know, and, and threw them up, you know, he, he didn't have to be connected. Mm -hmm. Those now, are, yeah, they're now really that I just outed videos. that right here on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I liked watching those, especially the, you did the one with the with the cabinet, not the cabinet, the, the cutting board from Halloween mm. too. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's yeah. A really nicely edited, nicely, nice production on those. And we did Warriors of, too, right? It was like a real, cool. like, fucking crew. Like, it I was. mean, like the, when they came over and did it, it was like, you know, they, they had catering and all this shit. I mean, it was like legit, like, you know. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, it's not like me with my iPhone. I mean, this was like real, real equipment. So, um, yeah, it's a bummer that those got taken down, but I mean, if I can't get those episodes from him, yeah, I can obviously just shoot my own versions of, you know, I've, I've been meaning to do the, the killer clown thing anyway. Um, not because of that pest, but just because, yeah, I just wanted to, to do my own. Um, right. I'll get around to it. I've got so much stuff. It, I just got so much shit and so much content that I have already filmed that I just trying to find the time to edit. I'm I'm just finishing up an ed an episode tonight that I'm gonna drop on Christmas Day as a gift to the world. Yeah, your videos have or, been absolutely fantastic on YouTube, man. Uh, the what's that? Your videos they've been fantastic on YouTube. Oh, the Hellraiser. Thanks. The, the prop was amazing, but hmm. the journey was the best part about it, which I think that was brilliant to do that. Wait till, yeah. wait till you see the next one. So if you think I, if you, I, the, the prop store story doesn't end. Um, remember how I said in the episode that there was something else I got. I thought that was the well, reanimator. That's not, no, it. that wasn't it. No, I got some, I, that was something I picked up just after. And it was an easy video it's well <clears throat> that whole story was a collector contacted me a really well-known collector who basically said hey i was thinking of putting this up an auction like on a prop store or something but didn't want to really didn't want to give them the money and deal with all that bullshit he would rather sell it direct to a collector he knew who would appreciate it and take care of it so we you know he contacted me Actually, we didn't, con we bumped into each other at a convention and that, and it was like, oh, hey, by the way, you know, kind of thing. 
So he was in Chicago and uh, I met him when I was at Flashback and it was a significant amount of money and it's a, you know, a fragile prop that had. So I was like, I would love to do this transaction in person mm-hmm. and, and in cash, you right. know? And, but it was like, I don't want to fly to fucking Chicago just to do that. You know, um, I wish there was a way I could make that coincide with a trip that I have to go to Chicago for another convention or something, but I didn't have anything lined up right away. Right. And I didn't want to lose out on it. I didn't want him to sell it. You know, Oh, is he, is he, is he gizzy up? No, no, (laughs) no. I I see headlights out front and I'm like, what the fuck? No, go ahead. Um, Sean's very observant. Yeah. So anyway, um, I had a convention in Connecticut, uh-huh. Connecticut Horror Fest, and it just so happens my layover was in Chicago. And I looked at the timing of it because Chicago Airport, if you've ever been there, is the worst. It's, it's like my worst. least favorite airport. O- O'Hare, O'Hare yeah. sucks so much balls. We really, had a connecting. Yeah. We had a connecting flight from CVG uh, to O'Hare, and then O'Hare to Dallas when we were going to Hawaii. Uh-huh. We had 20 minutes from when we got off the plane to get to our next plane, and we had to go across the entire fucking. Did you have airport. to go in the underground disco tunnel. Oh yeah, and we <laughs> ran. And they were calling, dude, they were calling our name on the fucking like intercom, like, oh, last call. They they named us. And I was like, we're fucking running, dude. Like, yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. That that tunnel is uh, featured in the the Puff Daddy video. What is it? Uh, The one where they use every breath you take by the police. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He's he's like on the escalator thing in that tunnel. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. In that tunnel. Anyway, so I figured out, well, I said, look, I have an hour layover. If my gate is not far, you know, the couple got a couple things. Number one, hope that my flight doesn't get delayed leaving Orange County. And number two, hope that it's not across the other side of the airport. And I just got lucky. So what I said to the guy, I said, well, I told him I would text him as I was taking off and let him know if we looked good. And I said, yes. So I told him exactly where to meet me in the uh, ticketing area, which mm-hmm. is right outside of uh, security. So I literally, with cash, went out there, met him in person, gave him the money. He handed me the head and I went back through security and got on my other flight. So I had this head with me and it just so happens at that convention, Barbara Cramden and Jeffrey Combs were appearing. Mm-hmm. So I was like, how cool would it be to make a video of me reuniting you guys with Dr. Hill's head? And that's, right. so that's what we did. It was just like a spur of the moment thing. That's why that video kind of jumped ahead of the next prop video, which yeah, there's a whole nother story. So, I mean, I, the drama I talked about in the Hellraiser video got, went even further. Uh, really? Yeah, oh, I, I got into it even more with them. Did you film it? Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, a lot of it was via email. Um, but I'm gonna document everything, and and I I did some smart ass shit in there where I I I was being a smart ass for sure. Um, but I think it'll be entertaining for people because I kind of sent them a big fuck you in a way. Um. I can't wait. But yeah, I think I, they won't like that video either. <laughs> um, and I'm actually shocked that they kind of walked into it because knowing what I did before, you would think that they just would not want to deal with me anymore. Um, you know, as in regards to let's not stir the pot with this guy anymore. Let's just get him off our backs. But they decided they want to be dicks. So anyway, but I'm. I still buy from them. I just bought some shit in their last auction, uh, like a couple weeks ago. So, hmm. um, but mind you, they haven't seen this new video yet either. So, but, <laughs> but it was also that auction took place in London. So the guys I was dealing with in LA, I don't think really were that involved with the London auction. So. Where do you want to go, Nick? I mean, shit, dude, just to be funny, um, not to be funny, but, 
<laughs> I've seen him elaborate. He he hasn't really elaborated on that that much on the thing with two heads. He's given his like, you know, overall thoughts. And obviously, since it's so controversial, and I just you know, obviously he knows what I'm going to ask him. Uh, we'll just, we'll get it out of the way. We'll get we'll just get it out of the way really quick. Uh, Sean, so. As you know, a little movie came out about a month and a half ago that literally pissed, it seemed like, half of the world off. And, uh, you know, I know that you're overall, you were like, yeah, you know, I liked it. It was, it was fine. It was, you know, whatever. Um, I don't need you to elaborate too much on it because we don't need to spend all night on it. But I'm just curious, uh, looking back on the Blumhouse trilogy, which is your favorite? Which is your least favorite? Um, God, you know, it's tough to say. I, I think... I think probably the first one was my favorite, but then kills was a little more fun with, and I also, but I have that weird sort of connection of having been on set. So it mm. kind of, I enjoy it more because I think about being there and, you know, so it's kind of hard to say for sure, but it's definitely not ends ends would be out of the three, my least favorite. Um, but with that said, I didn't hate Halloween Ends. Um, I kind of think it's funny that it that they did what they did because it it it. I think it's funny that it pissed off so many Halloween fans. I, I mean, because it's like you know, and, and I also feel like how spoiled the Halloween fans have gotten. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, when was the last time you guys sat down and watched Resurrection? Okay, now uh, last year on the podcast, and we we <laughs> tore it to shreds. When yeah, I got the four so like, I watched it a few weeks ago. A month I mean, you ago, watch I mean. Resurrection, or even you know Halloween Five, even Halloween Six to some extent. I mean, and you watch Ends, and you say, "What's a better movie?" I mean, Ends is a better movie than those films. I mean, sure, there's things you probably like more about them, and they may have a little more nostalgia because of your age when you saw them and shit like that. But let's be real; those are not good movies. Um, yeah, at least Ends has like a kind of coherent storyline. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I I didn't hate it. I didn't love it. I, you know, and I'm of the mindset that like, well, do you guys really think that's going to be the last we ever see of Michael Myers? No, there's going to be more. It's the, the end of this trilogy. No, but... Sean, that, that geriatric fuck's dead, man. There's just no way he's coming back. No way. Zero. That's what the fan base said. So, well, know? that one isn't coming back, but that <laughs> yeah. he's coming back in another form, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was funny, too, because, it, you know, Christian's a nightmare guy and I'm a Halloween guy. And we both really liked ends. And when we did our stream on it, like at the very end, he told me to close it out. And you're I just think it's funny. You're like, it's funny that it pissed so many fans off because I was like, look, if you guys didn't like Halloween ends, that's fine. But and Christian was like, go fuck yourselves. And then ended the fucking stream I on joking, that. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> but I mean, Jesus, man. I And then I, you know, I get people messaging me and they're like, oh, you know. Chris was at this con or James was at this con and they were talking shit about Halloween ends. And I'm like, uh, Chris on the podcast seems like he's proud of it. So, you know, yeah. I have, I haven't really heard them talking shit about it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, it's, I mean, when, I mean, even Chris said to me when they were making it, uh, He's like, this movie's gonna piss off so many Halloween fans. <laughs> I mean, he knew that right away, but it's not his movie. He's he's a hired effects artist, hired to do a job, and that's what he did. You can't blame him for anything, you know. Um, yeah. So, well, that hey, that that's all we'll touch on on Halloween ends. But uh, the next <laughs> question I had for you is, and I heard you talk about this on the last episode of the thing with two heads. Check that out, guys, on Sean's channel if you guys have not already. I know you can't delve into it too much because mm -hmm. there's a lot of moving parts. There's no official announcement yet, but obviously we saw the leaked <laughs> promotional shit. Um, I mean, you confirmed on the podcast, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's a thing. I mean, it's no secret now that it's a thing, but there's final details that have to be worked out and an actual announcement to take place. How long has 45 years been in the works, uh, age 45? I mean – was this something after 40 that you guys were like, we're probably doing this at 45 because I thought you guys might wait till 50. Um, 
I would like to wait till 50, <laughs> but yeah. you know, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I don't, I don't want to do them anymore. Um, they're a lot of work and, you know, I wish I was just, uh, doing what I normally do at a regular convention, but, um, but you know, I've been involved since the first one, the 25th and, uh, the, I guess the kind of blessing and the curse is the fact that if I didn't, well, I'm always going to be involved because I'm, I represent the bulk of the Halloween people. Right. So mm -hmm. there's no way I can not be involved, but the problem is if I'm not involved with the actual organization of the show, if I just walked away from it and said, I'm just going to, you know, call me if you want to book my people and the show happens and the show sucks people are going to blame me, mm -hmm. you know, people are going to say, you know, Sean put on a shitty show and I'll be like, no, I did. Cause my name's always going to be attached to it, whether I like it or not. So I might as well try to make sure it's the best show possible. Um, which just means I'm going to have to put, I'm going to have to do a lot more work. Um, mm -hmm. but as far to answer your question, I remember right after the 40th Malik said to me, you know, the four, the 45th will be here before you know it. And I'm just like, <laughs> And, and he goes, you know, we're doing it. And I'm like, uh, yeah. so anyway, mm -hmm. Malik and I, every time we talk, it gets brought up to some extent. And it's one of those things where it's like, we've been talking about it for a couple of years now. Like, yeah, that's going to creep up before you know it. And now that it's within, it's under a year from now, I wanted to be announced uh, 12 months out. And so did Nathan from horror hound because they're the ones who are kind of you know they're going to be putting it together like they did for the 40th and you know we're we're stuck waiting you know we yeah. the the trancus camp moves at a different pace and we're just waiting for them to to give us the go-ahead they had a few things they wanted to get in line and we thought it was going to be done a couple months ago and Nathan put that ad in the magazine thinking we would have totally been announced by then. So mm -hmm. now when that thing gets announced, do tickets go on sale right then? Or were you guys, would you guys have a date? No, we'll probably just announce, put a website up and then announce details of ticket sale dates and, and, you know, info dropping on this date or this, you know, cause uh, we also, uh, obviously we have to figure things out. If there's going to be a VIP package, what does that mm -hmm. entail? You know, who is involved with that? We got to make sure those people are on board and all that kind of stuff. So, so we probably won't put tickets on. I, I would think maybe like vendor tables would go on sale right away and maybe hotel, uh, like, uh, excuse me, room block info and discount codes will happen. So people that are, you know, I, I, this happens every time stuff leaks, they start booking hotel rooms and then they find out they could have got it for $50 cheaper if they waited. And then they cancel the room and try to rebook it. And it's just a pain in the ass. It's like, guys, mm -hmm. just sit tight, just wait, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'll definitely be going to that one. I, I hadn't been to any of them. And, uh, I mean, I've been to South pass and I did the tour of, of on my own with all the filming locations. I mean, I even snuck into the VA hospital from Halloween too. There was a hole in the fence and uh, I know you're not supposed to be in there. Cause I watched Horror's hollow grounds where Sean was yeah. like, we shouldn't be here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, luckily I got away. Only thing I saw was a coyote. Uh, there was a coyote chilling, but he didn't come near us. Uh, so like, I'm going to go, for sure. But yeah, I haven't jumped the gun yet on booking shit like that. Because like you said, I know there's package deals. I know they're going to be cheaper. And uh, I don't know. I mean, you have time. So, but I'm yeah, it was kind of like a foregone conclusion. I think that you guys were going to do it. There's a new trilogy that just ended. So it's like, I mean, yeah, like people are going to want to go to that. And I know the rumor mill is circulating about Jamie Lee. And I know that Sean won't give us an answer, guys. So don't expect us to ask him. But <laughs> On the last episode of his podcast, he said, I'm hopeful, I believe is what he said in response, or let's hope. So uh, if you Keep guys hope can, alive. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I, Sean, I'm, two yeah. words. Mm -hmm. 
two words and i mean i i, I probably ain't gonna go but two words rob zombie when are you finally gonna get him at a halloween convention a never gonna happen he don't want to be around all those people doesn't he he doesn't want he hates conventions i think he he doesn't want nothing to do with them really yeah but it's you cool, you were doing conventions with them years ago, uh, talking Devil's Rejects, huh? What 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 was that? Was it some kind of press that, junket or? Oh, that was at San Diego Comic Con. That's a different animal. That's not really a con- that. That's he's not protected like at doing those. It. Basically, what is he protected at those? Like he's he doesn't have to. Yeah, be... Yeah, I mean, dude, those are show San Diego Comic Con people like George Lucas and Johnny Depp or and Brad Pitt are showing up, but they're not. You you can't get near them. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, it, that's a that's San Diego Comic Con and New York Comic Con are more are more like multimedia events where people drop new products, new films, yeah. new video games. New, you know, yeah, he was there as a probably a press obligation to, to Lionsgate at the time. He didn't do a signing or anything, you know. Yeah. Christian, speaking of Rob Zombie, did you watch Sean's video a week or two ago? The unearthed uh, interviews from uh, 2007. Yes. Oh my God, so good, so yeah. good, man. I, I first of all, Sean, I know you prefaced it by saying, like, look, guys, I cringe when I watch these back. I'm a much better <laughs> interviewer now, but like. I didn't really get that impression. I did get like the impression that you were kind of like, you didn't want to fuck up. You know what I mean? You didn't want to like be like, Oh God, they're going to think I'm some fucking like noob or whatever. Yeah. But I felt like it was very natural. I especially like the segment with Malcolm. I thought Malcolm was like, just seemed like a really good <clears throat> dude. Um, yeah. I thought his, his and Rob's were the two best interviews. They were, they were both very kind of chill and, um, you know, it seemed like they were having more fun with it where the other ones, especially uh, Sherry, just seemed like she didn't want to be there, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. so. But Sean, I remember like maybe five or six months ago, I was like, Sean, do you have any of the 30th anniversary posters? And you thought you did and you looked for <clears> me and you didn't. So I had to get a bootleg plaque off of eBay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to show That's you cool. that. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I thought I found some. I'd still like like one if you ever do. You know, I know you're busy, but that's I think that's a gorgeous poster. It's one of my favorites. You know. Yeah, Stephen Romano did that artwork, um, which was obviously some sort of Photoshop. I it it, it, it was kind of like Photoshop before Photoshop artwork was a thing. He was right. kind of he was one of the first guys doing it, so I don't think too many people realized it wasn't really painted. I, I maybe not even me. I don't remember. Um, he's the same guy that did our, uh, the really cool vintage poster for black waters of echoes pond, my movie, uh-huh. same artist. Um, but yeah, it was, that was sort of my design. I gave him the images. Like I said, you know, if you can fit all these in, you know, it's like vintage we, though, you know, like it, it just, yeah. I love it. It works. You know what I mean? There was another version. I have a, a, an early, there was an earlier version that had a different it had a different image in the center. I can't remember what it was. Um, I, I'd have to. Fi- I should find it and post it, just like as a, just to show people. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's that was a cool poster. Uh, I'd I'd love to do another one like that for the problem is though now when I was doing the thirtieth, the thirtieth was totally my baby. The thirtieth, I was completely in control of. It was the first one I did by myself. And I had no interference. Mm. Um, and then, uh, cause Trankus kind of came in at the last second on the 30th and basically said, Hey, you know, you need to cut us a percentage or we're shutting you down kind of thing. So I did, I just cut them in, but I sold all the merch and I, I gave them a cut of it and everything. Well then from that show on, they were the merch guys. So they're doing their own posters, their own shirts. They're, you know, it's like, okay, well, I'll let them do it. I'm not getting, so uh, there was a, I think there was a 35th poster that was pretty cool. I don't, and the 40th one. Yeah. There was a 40th one too. I, I that was more Mondo ish. It was smaller, mm-hmm. but who knows what we're going to do for the 45th. But yeah, I mean, as far as a 50th goes, I mean, you kind of feel like you have to do a 50th, but, but at that point, let's just say hypothetical, 
let's say hypothetically we get Jamie to do the 45th. But okay. Where do you go from there? You know, Rob I mean, you can't, you can't <laughs> yeah, but you can't top it. You see, you can't top that, you know? No, but I would say, and I know this would never fucking happen, but I would say the only way you could top that would be John. That'd be the only way. And I know that John, he just wouldn't do it. Um, and may, maybe he would, I mean, maybe he'd do it for a day. I, I mean, I don't know, but I think the only way you top Jamie is John. Like, well, I don't think that, I mean, John does conventions. I don't think that's even coming close to topping true. Jamie. Yeah. He's yeah, going to be he at does. Texas right mayor this year. Yeah, he does. Yeah. Doesn't he? Well, yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's he'll do conventions out of state, but he won't drive down the street to do the one that's celebrating his mm. franchise. That's so yeah. punk rock, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> is it? Is it though? I, it is. <laughs> or is it, it is. just grouchy? <laughs> it's grouchy. It, well, you know, you know how he feels about uh, Halloween as a whole. I mean, and you know, you you can't blame him. I mean, did, like Sean said in the in his interviews. I mean. Halloween fans are like the Trekkies of the horror genre. They just are like, and there's yeah. a lot of really fucking rabid ones. And I don't blame John for not wanting to go to a, I do. And I don't like, he should do it at least once, you know, but um, I don't know. I, I think with 50 though, Sean personally, and I think you'd probably agree. Christian and I've talked about this too. There's probably going to be a new movie percolating by then, especially with the 50th anniversary. So yeah, I yeah. Was, they're not going to miss that. Um, I don't think Malik would miss that anniversary personally. Yeah, but I think I'm tapping out at 50 for sure. Like, I think yeah. that's what I think we need to like. That should be the final convention, <laughs> you know, until somebody wants to do 100, you know, 55 years from now. Fuck it. We'll be, you know, most of us will be dead. Well, you're saying we draw the Halloween convention will be driving to cemeteries and just seeing the, <laughs> the tombstones of all the actors, yeah. basically. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking yeah, of the you, horse hall ground store, will be Jamie Lee Curtis's tombstone and so yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, do you guys reach out to John for these every five years? Do you guys try? Every time. And he just flat says no. Hasn't technically said no yet, but his person said he only wants to do one convention a year and he's already booked for Frightmare for next year. So mm. we're, we're begging, we're trying. Okay. Speaking of conventions, Sean, I wanted to get your thoughts on something. When I was at Texas Frightmare last year, it's funny, you know, everybody tells you they see you and they don't want to come up to you and say, Hey, you, but when I say you were, you were knee deep with, I think it was, uh, Devin Sawa, I think is the actor's name. Mm -hmm. You had pictures in your hand. You were you were getting him situated in the middle of the day. And I was telling my wife, hey, there's there's Sean. And she goes, just don't go up to him. He looks busy as, as fuck. I was like, oh, he I is. think I know if it was the middle of the day, I think I know what was going on. Devin for Devin was extremely popular at in Texas. Yeah. And uh we were running out of photos like crazy. Like his, mm -hmm. he was selling, and I, I was begging the photo op people to print more for me because I did, had no other choices. So I'm like, dude, you know, I was, hey, please, will you guys print me more? So I kept bringing stacks of photos, and they just kept selling out. I mean, it was, it was like whack a mole uh, yeah. with the fucking photos for Devin Sawa. It was crazy. Yeah, that was his best show for sure. It was just like, man, he Texas was loves it. Devin Sawa. Yeah, but anyway, my question was. I had a I noticed something interesting at the convention and I want to get your thoughts on this being involved with it for so long and seeing how things have possibly changed. Screen the screen people were there mm -hmm. and their lines were out the ass. Mm -hmm. And I went into the other room, like the right side hall when you walk into the thank God they're not doing it there anymore. It was like a zoo last year. It was ridiculous. But you go into the room where there's a few of these Texas Chainsaw Massacre people and their lines are small and no one's there. And I'm thinking to myself, and I, I take nothing away from the screen people. Don't get me wrong. I think it's a generational thing myself, but I'm thinking to myself, I want to go in this main room and just say, do you people not know some of these legends that are not going to be here that long that are in this room now? And you could go see them. You can see Nev Campbell next year. You could do this in a year. So these people are not going to be around now. Have you mm. noticed that over the last couple of years in general conventions? And do you think it's a generational thing? Because I feel like Scream is the new Halloween. It's like the, the teenagers, early 20s. That's the that's the movie. What, what is your take on that world now? I agree with that. I agree with that, definitely. But 
in regards to what you're saying about that particular show and that particular room, I think the real the reason that room was dead was a lot of those guests that were in that room, especially those Texas Chainsaw people, with the exception of uh, Kim Hinkle, who I was stoked to meet because I had never met him. Mm -hmm. um, most of those guys, like Julian Sands, and uh, I, there was a whole row of them that they they it was like their third, fourth time at Texas Frightmare, and I'm like, you know, why do they keep you know? No offense to them or you know, but man keep bringing them back, you know? And, uh, and I just think that they've, some of those guys have been a little played out and obviously the Texas chainsaw people, they've done the Texas area to death. Right. You know? So, um, that's why I think those guys were slow over there. Um, but, but I, cause I've seen an opposite effect of what you're saying with the older actors. I've noticed my older clients, as they get older in age, like Tom Atkins, for example, or even Nick Castle, that fans look at them and they see, wow, yeah, they're they're getting up there. We should probably get their autograph. I, I've noticed it make them more popular. You know what I mean? Like Dick Warlock. Better get Dick Warlock. He's getting up there, you know? Um, look at Jim Winburn. He was at a convention just the end of October, you know? And now he's gone. Um, you know, it can happen like that, you know, have you seen any surprise or have you had any clients that were just a surprise shock, how popular they were, where you anticipated a certain amount of people that were going to be meeting them per day. And then you were just like, Oh, like, Holy shit. Like this person, Devin Sawa, Devin Sawa. <laughs> yeah. I mean, but I had done shows with him before and I, had, I had, I had gotten the amount of photos that was a usual, you know, would usually be more than enough. It was just unbelievably popular there. Um, but as far as somebody that, that caught me off guard, um, it's definitely happened. I'd have to like, look at my, I'd have to go through my client list to like pinpoint somebody specifically. <clears throat> I can kind of, I can scroll through my website while we're talking. <laughs> um, but I know that that's happened. I know there's been, there's been, it's, it's happened where I thought somebody was going to crush and I'm like, oh, this fucking, this, this guy or girl is going to kill it. And then it's like crickets and you're like, whoa, you know, I totally read that wrong. And then there's been times where it was just, yeah, you know, I thought oh, they'll do okay. And they're like, holy shit, this is, you know, I guess people like them. Um, let me see. Let me see what I got. I'm going to go through, scroll through a few here. Um, see if I can find somebody that really jumps out at me as somebody that caught me by surprise. Uh, I know it's happened. Just, I was surprised to see at Scarefest that, uh, and I know he does a lot of cons, so I'm sure a lot of people that want to meet him have met him already, but that was my first con. And, uh, Bill Mosley did not have a very big line at all. Um, which surprised me. Well, I mean, I mean, Bill's a legend. I love Bill, a great guy, but the dude has been to every show out there more yeah. than once, you know? So, you know, I mean, but then again, you take a look at a guy like Kane Hodder that you could say the exact same thing about, but that dude always has a line, he you is. know? And um, he did at Scarefest. Felissa Rose. I mean, in my opinion, she has one movie. And it's 40 years old and she still has a, a good line at every show. And I know a lot of that for her has to do with her, her at her personality and the way she engages with the fans. And she, she really brings them in and makes them feel like they're all friends, you know? Um, so, uh, you know, that I, that having a good personality at the table can really, you know, up your sales if you're somebody i can think of a specific actor off that i'm not gonna say who it is because i like the guy but there's a certain actor i don't work with him but he literally sits behind his table with with like a newspaper or a book and just you know and when you're walking by a celebrity's table and they're like reading most fans don't want to bother them 
You know, they're like, mm-hmm. oh, I, you know, he, if you don't look approachable, you know, you're, they're not going to approach you. Right. Yeah. Um, Another one that was really, uh, really welcoming and really friendly was Michael Berryman. I mean, he talked to us forever and uh, he had people behind us in line and he just didn't care. He just kept talking to us. He was like that old Papa that just has all these stories to tell you. And you, just, you don't want to tell him to stop. You're like, this is awesome. I love it. And then he will. Uh, yeah. He went to grab my neck for a photo op. He scared Christian. Christian was getting ready to take a picture. He grabbed my neck. Christian, like, put the phone down. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. I'm like, no, take the picture. Take the picture. But, yeah, he was a great guy. What do you got, I'm Sean? Trying, I'm trying to find one that, that was, like, a real shocker to me. Um, I, can, I, I can think of a couple that ended up being, you know, a, kind of a bomb that uh that i thought was going to be really good um years ago this was probably i'm gonna i'm gonna say okay i i found one i found one that i'll i'll okay i'll i'll give you that story in a second okay but um years ago at horror hound in indianapolis we did this sort of slasher reunion Mm-hmm. And I thought, dude, this is going to fucking kill is because it was my sweet spot. I'm like, we had um, Derek McKinnon, who was the killer in Terror Train. We had Wayne Doba, uh, Gunther from Fun House. We had Peter, uh, I pronounce his last name. He was the killer. It starts with a G. He was the killer in uh, The Prowler. Um, we had all three. Maybe there was one more, but... I thought this is going to be epic. It was a total bomb, total bomb and pretty much soured all of them on doing conventions ever again. Hmm. Um, I mean, if I, if, if I was able to convince any of them to do another show, I think today they would do better. I think those films have become a little more beloved since then. It's probably been at least 12 years. Um, but at that time, you know, no, it seemed like nobody cared. It was kind of a bummer. Mm, Damn. Um, but the one that did surprise me, and it was because I was very naive of their popularity, um, was uh, Spencer Charnas from Ice Nine Kills. I did I didn't know how popular they were, and um, I was really shocked when I saw the lines. I was like, oh shit! Um, it's one of the girls that works for me was a big fan of theirs and she was like you gotta you gotta get spencer you gotta get spencer. and i'm like i didn't really know the band i was like I, yeah okay you know and anyway we ended up connecting and he was a fan of horrors hollowed grounds and stuff and knew my stuff and we kind of bonded on the horror stuff and so like, let's give him a shot and and dude it's just like but the his band is blowing up right now too so it's just but like i was really kind of oh wow this guy, yeah, he's got he's got a following. So mm-hmm. that one surprised me. So that's cool. Mm-hmm. So the so the uh, the company you have it's called it's uh, Convention All Stars, right? Yeah. So how's that, that going? Name, yeah. <laughs> so how's that going? It seems like you've got like a like a it's like a big thing now, right? You got employees and everything. It's like it's like a whole it's like a whole organization. Um. Well, I mean, I don't have anybody really on the payroll except for my girlfriend really the all the girls that work for us and guys so it's mostly girls uh, most they're all kind of in a volunteer sort of there's no real pay, paychecks it's it's a per show uh i pay you per you know they right. all have regular jobs they get the time off to come do these conventions i pay them to do that one weekend it's not mm-hmm. like you know they got health care and shit, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, but, but no, I mean, my company has been kicking ass. I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, I have, have made a very good life for myself doing this. Um, I can't complain. Yeah. So Hell yeah. yeah, Sean, Sean bought a couple yachts last year and, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a vineyard. So he's doing well. <laughs> I I bought the equivalent of that in 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 props and stuff probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So 
but yeah, I, I have different tastes. I'd rather have Dr. Hill's head than a yacht, you know? So, you know, the most yeah. fascinating thing about your YouTube videos is watching you trying to move them inside of your house. That's like the pinball machine, dude. I was, yeah. at the, I was biting my nails. I was like, they, they're not getting it up there. They're just, yeah, not gonna now I, I have another pinball machine coming and I don't know what I'm going to do. Um, cause I, I helped on the uh, Scooby-Doo pinball machine that spooky, uh, pinballs putting out and uh so i'm getting a free machine so i'm like fuck That's i awesome. have no room for it well, well tell me about this office you were you mentioned in your videos you said you're moving some stuff out of your house yeah and... well it's just i i yeah i decided to i i needed to have a, a better working space and i just figured you know what i can put a lot of my museum type shit in there um and because my house is just getting too cluttered. I mean, I mean, I, I have two two people living in a four bedroom, two story house with a giant entertainment room expansion, and I'm out of room. Yeah, you know. So anyway, uh, let me ask you this, John, really quick. It, it's kind of a weird question, but like living in California, do you do you like living in there with all the congestion and how inflated the prices are, or is it with what you do? Do you really just have to live? in California. You know what I mean? Like what do you almost say to yourself? I, I could stretch my dollar if I went to Nevada or somewhere else like that. Do you ever think about that? Yeah, no, I could, I could, I could, I could buy, I could sell my house and buy a mansion in Ohio. You know, um, you don't want to come here, Sean. You don't want to come here. Down <laughs> Is that where you Ohio. are? Yeah. Yeah. You're Ohio? <laughs> I'm in Ohio. Yeah. But you know, it, it, it's just, um, I've, I've lived here my whole life. I, I like it here. And I actually, I live in a nice area. See, I hate LA. LA is congested. LA is mm -hmm. a nightmare. Orange County is not bad. Orange County is much more spread out, much more chill. Um, it's, I mean, and I live in just, I, in where my house is located is so perfectly situated with everything. I mean, we have everything so close to us and I'm only an hour from LA, 20 minutes from Disneyland, you know, two so hours from the up. mountains, 15 minutes from the ocean, you know, I mean, and my house is almost paid off. So it's kind of like, I mean, I, you know, I've thought about it, you know, someday, but I really, I'm also an extremely nostalgic person, like, like overly nostalgic, like, mm -hmm. and leaving California it would, I know would be, difficult for me probably just i mean i'm one of these guys that i did it just on friday thursday or fr thursday i i was um over near my old neighborhood and every time i get because i live about about 40 minutes 30 30 40 minutes from where i grew up and if I'm ever in the area, I'll go eat lunch at one of my old favorite places. And then I'll just drive around. There's my mm -hmm. high school. There's my house. There's, you know, I do like the, the nostalgia tour. And, uh, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I wish I could be back there. <laughs> yeah. Right. And it's, it's something too. Christian hasn't been out that way. So like, and, and obviously I went there two years ago and, and you know, what people say about LA is definitely true, but I do feel like it is a common misconception at times. Like all of California isn't that way. Um, like San Diego was fucking awesome, man. I mm -hmm. loved San Diego. The weather was perfect. It wasn't super congested. It was a nice area, but yeah, then, then you go, you know, two hours north and you're in L.A. And in L.A., I mean, obviously, it's very congested, fucking smog everywhere, you know, like you yeah. can't see shit. But it's it's no different than, I don't know, New York City or San Francisco or, you know, it's just like big, highly populated cities are like that. But California from top to bottom is what, like? 10 hours driving. So there's a lot of space there. And, and I, I thought it was really nice. I would love, that's the place I always wanted to live. I didn't want to live in LA, but I wanted to live somewhere in California. Um, well, just how awesome you went to the Halloween locations. How amazing mm -hmm. is South Pasadena? Oh, I mean South Pasadena is literally the Midwest planted in Southern California. Yeah. You're 20, 30 minutes away from Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And yeah. 
you're but all of a sudden you will come upon this little town and it's like oh here's normal like trees that you'd see in the midwest and and, yeah. and just houses side by side and then oh but a couple blocks away you can see palm trees but it's literally like someone picked up a neighborhood from illinois and seriously fucking placed it there like it literally yeah. feels and looks that way and it was awesome but yeah that i hear what you mean about the nostalgia because like i was literally standing on the porch of the myers house and like that shit just like i don't know man like it just was like wow i'm literally standing where like jamie lee curtis john carpenter donald pleasant stood like that's really fucking cool like that's a really cool thing to think about and so being in southern california you're also surrounded by a ton of places where movies were filmed i mean they're everywhere so not yeah. just nostalgia from your life but nostalgia from all these movies that you could just go today. I want to go see the filming locations of this movie or that yeah. movie because it's see a, Freddy's it, house. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I, and another, I, mm -hmm. that's another thing that I love about being here is I can, if I want to go to the Myers house right now, I can be there in an hour, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, but you know, never say never. I mean, there's a, you know, it's funny as my dad, he he moved from Orange County to Northern California and he found this bitching house, man, in the woods. It was this insane house out in the boonies, man. You had the dirt road to get to it. And I remember being like, wow, this is crazy. He moved with his ex-wife, my stepmother at the time. But he hated it when it was all said and done, you know, done. And he told me it was the biggest mistake he, he made. He said, don't ever, he said, don't ever move for a house. And that's mm -hmm. what he did, you know, mm -hmm. cause he says, you know, and, and everybody I talked to that moves from Southern California, once you've made them move, it's too expensive to come back, you know? Mm -hmm. So Jeez. it's kind of like, you better, you know, be prepared because, you know, cause this house my, this house I'm in now in say Ohio might be a 250, $300,000 house. I'm just guessing. Right. Mm -hmm. But this house is probably a 1.1 million, you know, and what could I get for that in Ohio? You know, well, <laughs> I mean, yeah. so well, Charles uh, Mann bought a mansion in Cleveland. So <laughs> I bet it's yeah. probably less than that too. It looks like a big old yeah. dump. I mean, yeah, it would be dope to have a fucking dope ass theater and my own arcade and my own museum and, In Ohio. you know, but, it, <laughs> but, but yeah, you know, well, it, then, it's okay. also, it's the thing with California. That's hilarious. Another misconception, man, like based off of what you're talking about, like people are like, oh, well, why not just go to Florida? You know, Florida is just as nice, but it's so much cheaper. And it's like bull fucking shit. It's so much cheaper. My grandparents sold a $600,000 house that they lived in for damn near 50 years in the same neighborhood, mind you, where Peter Frampton lives here in Ohio. Mm -hmm. They sold it for $600,000 and bought a $1.5 million house in uh, Florida that is half the size. It's just like, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to go to a coastal state like that or a coastal city like that it's not just california i mean it's gonna be fucking expensive like it's just, it just is and <clears throat> yeah. i i yeah i mean if you want to move one day when you know you maybe retire or whatever and you're like oh fuck all this i'm gonna go get a house that's gigantic for half the price you know more power to you honestly but um i i see what you mean i i loved southern california i'd love to well, live there the other thing is the weather is yep i mean you can't beat this weather and right. Florida, fuck that humidity, man. Mm -hmm. No way. No way, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I, I considered Vegas, you know, because I have a lot of friends that have moved to Vegas. And I like Vegas, but the heat, man, it gets so hot there. I mean, it gets like, you know, close to 120, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it gets brutal. Yeah. I mean, I think it's bad here when it hits like 90, you know, mm -hmm. but. But the best thing about SoCal is it's 90 during the day, but it's not humid. And then at night, it's like 60 degrees and you can throw on a hoodie. I mean, it's literally yeah. it was, it's fucking awesome. I mean, the sun was going down. We were on the beach and the sun started going down. I was like, I'm getting fucking cold. And like, yeah. I didn't realize that. Also, the Pacific Ocean's fucking freezing. But yeah, well, that's what I, was I live, you know, I, I live about 10 minutes from the ocean. So I get that ocean breeze, which is nice, too, you know. Oh, in mm -hmm. like place like Vegas, you don't get that. 
It's just that mm-hmm. dry heat, you know, mm-hmm. no breeze. I mean, it's brutal. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to beat, man. Same with Arizona. Arizona's like Vegas, fucking hot, dry. Scorpions, yeah. fucking rattlesnakes, you know. Don't yeah, need that. Fuck all, no, fuck all that. But yeah. <laughs> Christian, Christian, I don't know how much you listened to the thing with two heads, but it was funny because I mean, talk just kind of like recapping some movies from this year. Uh, him and Chris were t- like going back and forth about movies they'd seen recently, and Chris was thinking about one, and Sean was like, oh, "I saw a movie the other day that was fucking awful, man. It was awful." And he was like, "Jeepers Creepers Reborn." He's like, "Jesus <laughs> Christ!" <laughs> Christian and I. We both think the movie was awful too, but in like a I don't know, what Christian, how would you put it? It's it's like a night it's like a 2006 straight to video blockbuster rental movie. Mm-hmm. You know, just kind of like trash. But I laughed at it. <laughs> I know? couldn't finish it, and I can usually sit through almost anything. I was just mm-hmm. like, man, I'm tapping out. It is Dude, so bad. He didn't get to see the great CGI of the weather main. He oh, didn't Jesus get to see Christ. It's, it looks the like, word. it's bad. It's so bad. It is horrible. But I mean, on that, what are some of your favorite movies you've seen this year? The horror movies that, that have come out or just, I don't know. I know you were a fan of the monsters and you obviously, you know, the monsters. So yeah, I, being, I don't really consider that a horror movie. No, I, just no, was, yeah. I just thought it was a fun, uh, you know, sort of nod to the, to the series. Um, Hmm. I uh, you know, I don't know if I saw anything this year that really blew me away. I mean, I liked Barbarian. I thought it was entertaining. Um, mm-hmm. um, you see Pearl or X? I saw both. I I have my issues with both of them. I mean, I there's things I liked about both of them, but you know, that's a that's a client for you, Sean. If you can get me a goth, Jesus Christ, are you kidding yeah. me? Yeah, I'd love to get her. Be a lot of guys um, in line. <laughs> yeah um i don't know uh i agreed with you on black phone the mask is cool I, oh, that's, but it's one so... I, that's probably my favorite one of yeah. of of this year i mean I, I enjoyed that one a lot yeah but i agreed with you it, it was either you or or chris it was like eh, it doesn't really look like it's from the 70s though that mask i mean the movie did but the mask is just i, like, I said that I mean? about the mask yeah the I mask agree. was too too well crafted you know yeah. I mean, I dig the mask, but this is just me being that nitpicker. When I watch a movie, I do that. I go, wait a second, that you know, that would be. I understood be... that. I understood that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the? Va- uh... Where's he vacuum forming those masks at? <laughs> yeah, no shit. What do you shit. think? Uh, what do you think of Hellraiser? You know, it it was okay. Um, I just, I really, I, I, I didn't like any of the characters like nobody was likable so i didn't have any attack i mean i thought the main girl was annoying i didn't have any attachment to anybody the designs were interesting but they that wasn't i that's not my hellraiser that's i they looked too slick they looked too it didn't look painful. It looked like works of art almost. You know yeah, what I mean? It, it, it looked like works of it, it, I, I said this on, on the show. On a, I, you may have missed that episode, but it reminded me like it was heavily influenced by The Cell, the movie The Cell. Right. No, I, I, I listened to that episode. I was just trying to, I, I was definitely trying to get more of your in depth thoughts about it because I did remember you were like, it was fine. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, I think, you know, I, we're living in a world right now where everybody wants to champion things for other reasons. And I kind of feel like, you know, you get to this whole thing about gay rights and and interracial stuff and, and, and those kind of things, which I'm, you know, I'm very equal across the board. I, 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 feel everybody should be able to do whatever they want with their lives. You know, I'm not, I'm not anti anything, but I don't think like, I don't want my movies motivated by that. You know, I don't Mm -hmm. want, I don't want, you know, that to be the focus. And, and, and I, and I don't want these PC type of topics to drive my stories. You know what I mean? I'm not a big big fan of black Christmas 2019. Not a huge fan. Didn't see it. Uh, 
Yeah, I I, I stayed away from that one just because <laughs> I kind of heard. So, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, I never saw it. Uh, but uh, I just feel like you know, I it it. it it bothers me when you have like you have a great script and you can't just hire the right people to be in the movie. It's like, Ooh, no, we need diversity here. Like we should add this guy and this girl. And you know, we need a character that that's like this because we don't want to leave them out. And it's like, no, this is not real life. Let, let the storytellers tell their stories. Let the mm -hmm. filmmakers make their films. Don't dictate, don't put them into a, a box you know, I, again, I'm not saying I'm anti that stuff. I'm not trying to find, I'm just, I want the storytellers to be able to tell the stories they want to tell. You know, it's like, it's like, you know, for example, I, I gave black phone a lot of credit for some of the dialogue it used, which nowadays would be, you know, you know, I'm surprised they didn't get called out for it. Cause you know, they dropped the F word in there, mm -hmm. you know, the, and, uh, and, and, a his, and a Hispanic slur too. Yeah. yeah. And was like, and, but that's how people spoke in that mm -hmm. time period. And you should be able to, you know, do that. You know, it's like, it's like making a movie about, you know, uh, the, the slave days and go, well, we can't have slaves in it. And it's like, mm -hmm. but, but there were slaves. <laughs> you realize that, you know what I mean? It's like, I mean, mm -hmm. it's getting to this point where people are so hung up on that. You don't want to offend people. And it's like, you know, just tell your stories, tell the let these story. people tell yeah. their stories, you know? And I just feel that unfortunately, potentially good movies are driven into a different direction because of film execs saying, well, you got to do this. You got to do that. You know? Yeah. I know for a fact a specific movie that came out this year was changed quite a bit because of some exec who said, we need this, we need this, you know? Mm. And, you know, I have friends that worked on that movie that were just like, dude, can you believe this shit? You know, mm -hmm. this move and, and it, and it, and it made the movie worse, you know? You know, so, yeah, well, we need more Corey Cunningham. That's that's what the exec said, and and obviously, nope. guys, I'm I'm kidding. He nope. did not say nope. it's Halloween ends. Don't go there. No, I know I'm a kidding. lot of people, bro. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know a lot more no, people no. than Chris. I'm just trying to. I'm just you know. I like to get under some of the fans' skin because you know Halloween ends again. Very controversial topic, but Christian, where do you want to go? I wanted, you know, I remember one of my favorite videos you had was the interview with Tommy Lee Wallace. I thought that was fantastic. Uh, and it was so cool that you literally just answered, you just asked a bunch of questions the fans had. Do you know what the latest is with his book? I'm dying to, to read it. I thought it was supposed to come out on a Halloween. I haven't seen anything. Somebody just told me that it is on Amazon right now for, for, for purchase. I don't know if it's shipping yet, but, but it's, it's up. You can, you can buy it. Okay, so, cool. And there's a hardback and a soft cover. I haven't spoken to Tommy in about a month, so I haven't heard any updates. Um, so yeah, that reminds me too. After I after I watched that interview, I remember a few days later you posted a video about I think it was Deborah Hill playing Michael Myers or something. Did you get a shitstorm of people hitting you up being like i don't care what he said blah 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 i mean did that really happen i mean i'm, I'm assuming it did like people can um, you can you kind of recap it for me i'm sorry i'm sorry but like so basically that well there was rumors for years that the scene where tommy doyle looks out the window across the street and sees the silhouette of michael looking back at him there was rumors for years that that was deborah hill in costume and it's kind of like the Jamie Lee Curtis being the operator in Halloween three. It's this rumor that just got legs and people now say it's, it's true. Oh, well, if you go to IMDB, it IMDB says Jamie Lee Curtis was the operator. It's like, yeah, anybody with a pro account could add that, add that. Yeah. you know, and somebody did and it's there. And I've asked her and she says, that's not me. I didn't do that, but no, no, she did it. That sounds that like her. Well, she said she didn't do it. It's her. It's her. Don't you, I, you know, can you believe that? Like, like, like just yeah. for a second, like, cause I've seen that too, where people was well, like, I, I remember saying one time and to one of my buddies, God, I, mean, I would assume it's like Deborah or something. No, that's Jamie Lee Curtis. I'm like, Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't know you talked to her. <laughs> you know, yeah. what the fuck are you talking about? But anyway, yeah. so the next time I do an interview with her, 
whether it be on our podcast or if it's at a panel at a convention, I am asking that question and putting it to bed. Like, right. Cause I, I haven't ever asked her that publicly. It was something I asked her, you know, privately. I doubt she's like, even seen the goddamn movie. Probably. Not. I don't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. But to back to the Deborah thing. Yeah. I mean, um, when I, I don't remember. I, well, what what brought it up for me was I have all these photos from the set, like a thousand never before seen Halloween photos that I can't do anything with because I technically don't own them. But I am in possession of high res scans of all of them. Mm -hmm. um, and as I was going through them, they, they're shot in sequence like uh, Kim Gottlieb was was on set taking pictures as they were shooting scenes and it's very apparent that that they did that silhouette scene the same time they did the scene when nick carries annie around the house and it's the ca same camera setup just look at it mm -hmm. it's the exact same they just bang those out at the same time clearly it's it's nick you know why would you have someone else smaller and a woman put on the costume to stand there for one scene. Uh, and it's, yeah. I mean, I was like, Oh shit. That's so then I asked Tommy about it and he goes, yeah, she, she, he goes, she put the costume on once kind of as a joke and she looked ridiculous in it, you know, cause she's so small. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, he goes, yeah, that's just a rumor, but you know, those, those people, you know how it is with Halloween fans that they're out there putting it out there and they said it. Now they're going to look like the moron. You know, because you got it wrong. Hey, I'm I'm even to blame for the Jamie Lee rumor a little bit because I brought it up before I talked to her. I brought it up in the audio commentary on Halloween three. So if you listen to Halloween three commentary, I have. Yeah, I said, hey, rumor is that that's Jamie the, as the operator. And I asked Tom, I said, I go, it kind of sounds like it wasn't her. And he goes, I don't remember her ever doing that, you know, so. <laughs> So he was saying that he didn't. Uh, and I'm like, well, I think he, the director would remember if Jamie Lee Curtis did something did in their movie, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. So then I asked her and she said no. And of course, now it's forever on Blu-ray. Me saying that and perpetuating that rumor. So Sean did it, guys. Sean did it. Yep. It was <laughs> it was actually me. I did the operator voice. I want to. Oh, it was shit. Me. I was Damn. 12. Yeah. I did a good female impersonation <laughs> at the time. Yeah, prepubescent. I mean, you you really can no. get away with a lot. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, that was a good video, though. I mean, it's when you spell it out like that, too. It's just like, it's ridiculous. Not only that. I mean, I know it's a picture far away, but she's a woman. She's got boobs. Like, <laughs> when it just kind of, I mean, you know, yeah. the whole thing was funny to me. <laughs> um here, here's something I, I thought about really quick sean you met paul stanley at one of the shows where you got behind this backstage i don't know if it's backstage but you met him and you got backstage. the guitar yeah. mm -hmm. how, how was paul in real life was he a really sweet genuine dude you know i've met him many times and i've gotten different versions of him i mean if you're dropping fifteen thousand dollars on a stage played guitar uh, he's really nice to you. <laughs> All right. Um, but, uh, uh, and, but I've met him probably, I can't remember, at least six times. Right. Mm -hmm. There was only one time he was, he was a little standoffish only, but it was at, that was at, um, the opening of, of one of their restaurants. Um, and him and Gene were there and I had brought, I had the uh, lock bar from the pinball machine, the new one. And I had it with me and I wanted to get all four of the members to sign the lock bar. If you know what the lock bar is, it's the, it's the bar that faces you when you're playing the pinball machine. So it's, it holds the, you know, so you take that off and you slide the glass out. Mm -hmm. Um, so I wanted to have all four of them sign across it and, I walked up to him and it wasn't crazy by any means. And I said, Oh, you know, would you mind signing this? And he's like, Oh, they, they won't let me. And I'm like, they won't let you, you know? And he's like, yeah, sorry. They won't let me. I, I'm like, bro. Yeah. I'm sitting there. You know, I, I, this is what I do for a living. I know you're in charge. <laughs> Don't tell me they won't let you. 
your fucking restaurant. You're Paul Stanley. If you want to sign something, you're signing it. You know, it'd be like Norman Reedus saying, oh, they won't let me. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like Norman can do whatever the hell he wants. Um, so I, I was kind of disappointing. I'm just like, all right. And then he walked away from me and he was just being kind of really standoffish. Ultimately, I got it signed that day. It was kind of a funny story. I'll tell you real quick. Please do. So I'm standing there with it. And this guy's walking by. Now, at this point, Paul and Gene are now sitting at a table in a roped off area uh, having lunch while all us fans are kind of standing around. And this guy's walking by me and he kind of goes, he looks at the thing I have and he goes, what is that? And I said, oh, it's the lock bar from the new pinball machine that just came out at the time. It was brand new and it came out. And he goes, oh, are you trying to get that signed? And I, I go, yeah. And he goes, give it to me. And I go, okay. And I hand it to this guy. And he walks over, sits down with them at the table. And he's sitting there talking to him. And he just hands it to Paul. And Paul, at this point, I can tell he realized, because he, he, he knew what, you know, he saw it. So it's like, fuck, I already told that guy no. You know, and he, so I see Paul go, and he signs it and he (laughs) hands it to gene gene signs it and the guy walks back over and he goes he goes uh do you know what this is worth and i go i don't know he goes a five-star review on yelp and i go done (laughs) (laughs) i wrote the best review they probably ever got um but ended up that guy is he's the third partner in the restaurant he's part owner so Hmm. i just got lucky yeah, and then, yes, I did get Ace and Peter on it later. So yeah, <laughs> now you got me wondering because I'm a big, big Kiss fan too. Mm-hmm. Um, favorite? Do you have a favorite member? And are you a favorite album, makeup, and non makeup era? Favorite member, as just a fan, not knowing them personally, would be Ace. Um, favorite member. I've had interactions with, I would go with Paul. Honestly, I've okay. had my best experiences with him. I've had sure. bad experiences with all of them. All right. And I've had great experiences with all of them. Um, unfortunately, I think the biggest Dick in the band, unfortunately is probably ACE and he's my favorite member. Um, but uh, what was it? Favorite makeup album. Yeah. Just makeup and non-makeup. Favorite makeup would be Love Gun. Favorite non makeup would be Revenge, probably. Very cool. Yeah. Did you ever meet Eric Carr? Only That's my favorite well, member of all time. Yeah, never met him. Never met Mark St. John. I met Vinny. I've met Eric Singer. Stop. Met... Stop. You met Vinny? Yeah. How crazy <laughs> was he? When I met him, I, I met him in 1986, 85. It was, I, I met him at a promotion. Huh? You met him pre invasion. Oh God, please no, tell me. I, met, I don't know if it was pre invasion. It was a album release party for Vinnie Vincent's invasion. So okay. I, the whole band was there and I met the whole band and uh, got stuff signed. Okay. Time out really quick. Was it Robert Fleischman? Was this, it was already, was it, it was already Slaughter? Mark Slaughter. I don't okay. think Robert ever played live with them. I don't think he I th- did. I, I'm obsessed with this. So I, this is amazing to me that you got to meet yeah. him. Now, is, yeah. like, have you ever, do you ever talk to like Dana Strum or those guys anymore? Do you have any connections with those guys? Never. I've never seen any of them ever again. <laughs> Dude, I, oh, I, I want to hear an interview with Dana Strum just tell the stories of how crazy he was back in the day. Cause I love Vinny's guitar playing and he writes, but he's crazy. He's just a psychopath, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any clients like that that are just like super creative, but like you, you have a hard time. Do you want me to tell you what clients of mine are crazy? (laughs) (laughs) Well, not not crazy, but like, that's really a bad segue. I apologize. But Pete, you know how, you know, they have the expression, the left brain, right brain people, where sometimes if you're super smart and creative in this element, you're not really good at basic decision making. Do you have, do you know anybody like that where you have to say, well, wait a minute, stop. We got to do it this way step a b and c or anything like that have you ever or have you ever worked with anybody like that yeah oh big time big time i mean uh you know uh i mean 
uh, Tom Noonan is 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 very like that in a way where he's he overthinks everything and he's very awkward. You know who that is from? Uh, he's the yeah, Frank Tom Frankenstein Newman, yeah. and Monster yeah. Squad. Robocop was, uh, two, yeah, all that. Robocop two, Manhunter, um, House of the Devil. Uh, last action hero too. He's great. Last man. action hero. Yeah. The Ripper. Um, but yeah, he, he's awkward. He's awkward. <laughs> I remember this is a true story. I'm in Greenwich village. I was on vacation in New York with a friend. We're shopping in Greenwich village. I'm walking down the street. I look up ahead of me and head, you know, he's six, five or something, you know, tall, lanky. And I see Tom Noonan walking towards me. And Tom Noonan walks up to me and he looks at me with this expression. He goes, Sean, what are you doing here? <laughs> and, and not like, hey, man, hey, you know, it's like, what are you doing here? W why are you here? <laughs> and I go, um, I'm we're just we're shopping. What, what are you doing here? I live here. I'm like, OK, <laughs> it was just super awkward, man. It was just like this weirdest like he's he's an awkward dude. Mm. Um, another guy who I get along with fabulously and I think is an uber intelligent guy, but is, uh, you know, he's, he's a guy who he, he's, he's a bit odd when it comes to things is, is Tobin Bell. You know, he's, he's just, he's, he's one of these people that I kind of feel like he overthinks things, you know, um, but I've never had a problem with him. Uh, but he's just, it's not like somebody like, Hey, you want it? It's like, Hey, you want to go, uh, it's just a simple thing and be like, you know, do you want to, you want to go have lunch over, over, over that restaurant over there? I'm like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that might be good. And he'll think about it. It's like, it's not somebody. Like, yeah, let's go do that. You know, it's, it's very, everything. There's like a thought process. It's kind of, you know, does you want to play a game? I don't know. Does the movie <laughs> industry? Make that joke. Yeah. Does like the movie industry? You think do that to these guys? You think they're just that's who they are? No, I I think you know eccentric people get into acting. You know, uh -huh. um, you know it's just you know I, I think a lot of these people are maybe it's an escape for them, a way to be maybe more normal. <laughs> who knows? You look like you're about to pass out, dude. You like you're no, 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 no. <laughs> No, I Saturday is my last day of my work week. So like my work week catches up to me. He literally anytime we record on Saturday, Christian's like, man, you about to fall asleep because I'm always fucking yeah. yawning. No, you're good. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. <clears throat> I was going um, to, I did when I, uh, well, go, oh, yeah, finish, finish. No, I'm done. Go ahead. Uh, well, I wanted to ask you and, and, uh, okay. So this is, uh, it's a loaded question and I, I'm not oh, asking, I, I know, right? Go I'm, not for asking, it. I'm not asking anybody to take sides here at all, but I do feel, feel like Sean would be privy to what might have happened afterward. Obviously, two months ago, there's all this fucking fallout about the red carpet premiere of Halloween ends. Oh, and, shit. And, uh, but, 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 but I don't want to ask about that because we already know <laughs> everything that transpired there. But afterward, Danielle took to social media to say that she had an update on the story. And like, you know, then people saw that Jamie followed her and scout on Instagram and whatnot. And I know you represent work with a lot of these people. Do you know if there was like anything behind the scenes afterwards where they spoke and kind of cleared the air or anything? Cause I know there was a lot of confusion and obviously it was just another reason for the fan base to fucking cannibalize itself. So I, I don't know. Did oh, you, he, you hear anything well, more? The fact that you're, uh, it's been verified. She followed them. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, that's first does. I've heard that. Yeah. She followed him on Instagram and uh, then Danielle, I, I can't remember what magazine it was had like posted something in magazine. Danielle yeah. It was on Instagram. Um, a it, magazine's it, talking about this. I don't know if it was like, you know, physical, it was, a website. Well, it's but what, even believe, still, it's like it's do, news. Yeah. Well, it, and then Danielle had commented on that on Instagram and was like, we have an update, you know, after the fact, you know, reach out to me. I'd love to come on or talk about it or, you know, help contribute to a blurb about it or whatever. So, and then people are like, oh, well, Jamie followed them. So maybe Jamie or Jamie's people reached out and were like, hey, because obviously I, and I think anybody that's pragmatic and level-headed took it as, yeah, Jamie just did a month of fucking around the world 
press like and and you know obviously this was jamie's camera person photographer going hey guys why don't you just get next to jamie and jamie's kind of like the fuck uh like okay i'll take a picture like i don't like horror movies you know so i i didn't give a shit either way i really didn't um but i just didn't know if you had heard anything more about it if they had like talked afterward because you everything you've told me about jamie is she is a genuinely good person and i would not think that she was trying to be like oh fuck you guys there's footage of her being interviewed on the red carpet saying how exhausted she was and that she had been she hadn't even eaten that day and she had been she did all these this press tours of different countries and it was finally all coming to a head she she was spent there's no doubt she was spent you wouldn't be who you are without her she i mean i mean scout you're literally playing her character um Danielle, the movie you're known for is the franchise she built. And even her if daughter. she, yeah, even if she was rude to you, just you know, keep that to yourself and your 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 circle. Don't make it public. That's not cool. She's amazing. That she fucking sent. I think you saw, you probably saw she she mailed me this framed photo with a note. You know, yeah. I mean, it's like. Come on. I mean, that is a cool, selfless person. You know, she doesn't watch these movies. She doesn't know who they are. She doesn't. She, I guarantee you, she didn't know who Heather Langenkamp was, Amanda Wiss, you know, Scout, Daniel. She has no clue. She doesn't even really watch her own movies. I mean, when we did the audio commentary for H2O, she literally told me, Sean, let me know when the scary parts are happening because I, I want to cover my, I mean, she's, she's mm-hmm. so anti. She doesn't like to be scared, right? So she would have, Danielle and Scout would have benefited greatly from somebody introducing them to her. It is I mean, a shame when you think about it too. It's like you hear about all the good stuff Jamie does, for instance, doing that convention yeah. with you years ago. She gave all the money to the kids in the hospital. Yeah, I don't know. It, it it really bummed me out. It bummed me out because I like all of them. I mean, I had that happen with me with John Carpenter. One of the, you know, I was... uh I was at, um, I was at, uh, I was a journalist at the time. I think I was writing for dread central and I was doing a set visit on the fog remake and final <laughs> oh, destination God. three. Hell yeah. yeah, brother. <laughs> so they were doing set visits for both films cause they were filming on the same lot and next to each other. So I was walking it from final destination set, final destination three set over to the fog set and as I'm walking outside, I see John Carpenter stand outside smoking. Now, mind you, he had nothing to do with making that movie. They literally used his name as a producer. They brought him in for one day just to do press. So they flew him in just to do press. I'm walking out. I'm wearing a, a Sonics, S- Seattle Supersonics jacket. And I'm walking like, and he looks at me and he goes, hey, Sonics, good team this year. And I go, oh, yeah, you know, we start talking basketball and he's being super cool, right? Everything's cool. And I go, oh, hey, by the way, I'm the guy, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know that I'm the guy who made the Halloween 25 Years of Terror documentary Anchor Bay just put out. And he goes, good for you. <laughs> just completely, <laughs> you know, Jesus. just completely shuts down, you know. Was that a disappointment? Yes. Yeah. You know, that was, you know. That was a bummer, <laughs> you know, but, you know, I, I just, well, that's, you know, that's, that's that, you know, has something changed with him now? Or, or was it just no. money that got him involved with the new ones? And he was just like, oh, what the hell you think? Oh, yeah. with the, oh, do you think the music money. with his kid too? Do, do you, I'm sure he enjoys that. Right. I, I think he's really enjoying doing the music. Um, I don't know how much he's enjoying rehashing the Halloween theme. But I'm sure he's enjoying writing the new music for the stuff, you know, and I know he loves playing live. That's the first time I've ever seen the dude smile is on stage. I mean, (laughs) he he seems to really like it. So, um, but, you know, what what I'm saying is, you know, I don't know, it's in my head. Yes. At that, I was thinking John's going to be like, oh, my God, hey, that's awesome. You know, you know, I, I. you know, the, you know, great to meet you. <laughs> but instead it was like, boop. Mm-hmm. well, it's funny too, because Sean has, you guys, 
we've had Sean on here before, and obviously, uh, I've I've talked to Sean on my channel, and everybody listens. Everybody listens to us, listens to your podcast. And it's like you would think me anytime you'd meet Sean, you feel like you know him, and it's like, oh, he you know he'd be down to take a picture, and he'd be cool, and he'd be this and that. And it's like, but Sean has also literally told us. Don't come up to me sometimes at certain conventions because I'm, you know, neck deep in a bunch of shit and I don't want to come across as a dick, but like I just have so much going on and so much that I'm worrying about. So it's like you also have to understand context is important too, you know? Yeah. And so yeah, I mean, I totally get it. I, I, yeah. Well, I've I I'm cool with people coming up to me almost at any time. But just know that I could be in a situation like you saw where I look like I'm flustered and I'm doing a thousand things. Yeah. And if I'm like, even when I, I'll be honest with you, even when I'm at my most busiest, if somebody comes up and goes, dude, can I get a photo with you? I usually will just go, yeah, her, and I'll just do it. Right? <laughs> nice to meet you. And then I'll get back to what I'm doing. I right. usually never say no. But if somebody's like, I want to talk to you or about, can I ask you about something? I'm like, I have to take care of this right now, but I, 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 you know, I'll be back, you know, and then I, I may have to dart off, you know, because a lot of times I'm, you know, things I'm doing are time sensitive or like, you know, so I, I'm, I'm running around, I'm working. It's like if you, if, you know, sure. if you're working at Best Buy and I, right, hey, can I talk to you about your regular life? And it's like, I got to go get this TV from <laughs> Backstock real quick. This guy's waiting, right. but I'll be, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm at work you know so mm -hmm. yeah yeah speaking of conventions again can i ask you what is the absolute worst uh not now on the opposite of that like the most ridiculous uh cost a customer for lack of a better term or person trying to get an autograph or whatever from one of your clients and like shit start hitting the fan like maybe there was a fight or they were just being really weird and aggressive do you recall any situations where you had to intervene Oh yeah. I mean, I'm trying to think something just happened. Um I know Danielle used to have a stalker, didn't she? I don't know if you represented her at the time, but she was very open <laughs> about that. He was oh, showing no, up to I, shows I've, and shit. I've worked with her for years. Yeah. No, this she had a incident recently. Yeah. And so she's been bringing a secure this big ass security guard with her uh to shows. Um but I'm trying to think of there was something recently where I had to actually have somebody removed. They were just being such a pain in the ass. Because these people will come up and they, it's some people just won't take no for an answer and they just think they're entitled and they, you know. And uh, there was some lady at, God, I can't remember what show it was, but she was just refusing to follow, to cooperate. And I was just like, you know what? And and she basically was like, you know what? Like, no, I'm talking to him. I'm not talking to you, you know? And I'm like, no, I'm his manager, you know? <laughs> so I'm talking for him, okay, <laughs> you know? And uh, and uh, had to have, and he said, you know, you're out. I'm trying, oh, what? oh God, I'm trying to think of what, there was one recently. Um, oh, okay. It just, it was a guy. There was this guy. Um, I love stories God, like this. <laughs> what show was it? I'm trying to remember what show it was. Oh, it was uh, Mad Monster Party Arizona. Oh, Wait, shit. Yeah, Mad Monster Party Arizona. It was a vendor that was waiting for Nev Campbell. Uh -oh. Like, okay, here's what happened. <clears throat> Nev Campbell had this massive line. The convention ended. It was like, you know, the, the doors closed at seven o'clock. The convention ended at seven. We mm -hmm. had cut the line off about two hours prior. Her line was cut off around five o'clock because she had such a big line and she had some sort of Zoom call meeting she had to do uh, after the show. And it was getting really dicey that it was going to be like, you know, I want to make sure she didn't make sure she missed it. Right. Well, all of a sudden this guy out of nowhere gets in the back of the line that we cut off two hours ago. And I see some commotion going on over there, but I'm not really paying attention. All of a sudden, one of the security guys comes up to me and he goes, Hey, there's the, see that guy over at the end of the line. I go, yeah. 
And he goes, he's a vendor that just, you know, we told him the line was cut off two hours ago, but he's refusing to get out of line. And, you know, he's saying because he's vending, he can't wait in line and, you know, and all this stuff. And I go, I go, do you tell him we cut it off at five o'clock? Yeah. And he goes, you won't get out of line. I'm not sitting there thinking to myself, well, you're the security. You should be just escorting him out, you know, (laughs) but he's like talking to me about it. And I go, look, I go, tell him, you know, he, you know, you know, he's got a bail. So he goes over commotion. This guy's causing raising hell. Finally, I go, fuck it. I'll I'll take care of it. I walk up to him and I go, Hey man, you know, we cut the line off at five o'clock. We've turned away, you know, a ton of people, you know, she has this thing she has to do. We need to get our, dude, I'm a fucking vendor, bro. And I've been in here and I can't, you know, I can't be standing in line all day because I got to work my table. I go, well, you're a vendor. I go, guess what? I go, great. You can be first in line tomorrow because you're in here early before the doors open. So we'll get you first. T- problem solved. Dude, I don't want my fucking autograph. I want to get it done today. I want to get it done today. And I go, well, guess what, bro? You ain't getting it done today. You know what? I ain't talking to you. I ain't fucking talking to you. You know, who the fuck do you think you are? I go, I'm, I'm her fucking manager, dude. And I'm like, and he goes, he's, what do you say? I, I, he started lipping. I, he called me a retard. First off, mm. <laughs> he said, I'm, he goes, you're a fucking retard, man. And I'm just like, oh, and this is really? a vendor okay. in the goddamn yeah. convention. You're kidding yeah. me. Yeah. And I said to him, I go, I go, bro. I go, well, guess what, dude? I go, you know, you ain't getting shit ever. I said, get, you're out of here. And he goes, Oh, you fucking dumbass! I'll just get somebody else to get in line, get it done for me. You think I can't get the fucking autograph. And I'm just like, and I just go, okay bro i i so i i call the promoter evan and i said Uh dude you know who this fucking guy is they find out who he is they fucking not only they throw him out they packed his table and told him to get the fuck out he's gone like they he said you're out you're done (laughs) what an idiot yeah he caused this huge sand and i was like what's going on i'm like don't worry about it i got this (laughs) you know know. Uh, it's funny like Come on, bro. I mean, are you fucking entitled or something because yeah, you're a vendor? vendor. Yeah, yeah. He didn't he's even a, pay he's for a fucking vendor, bro. And be, be honest, Sean, and, and you kind of spelled it out. If he would have came up to you and snuck in the line, and and I, it, let's say I'd have been like, "Hey, you know what, man? Little little thing going on. I really just would like. Can can you work something out with me? You probably would have been like, "This is what I, I can do for you, dude." If he would have come up to me and said, "Hey, man, you know, I'm on a vendor over here, and you know, is it? Co- I'll pay." Is it cool if I could just, you know, sneak in at the end? I probably would have said, okay, make it quick. But since he was such a dick about it, you know, yeah, you were, that's, that was the man. I was like, fuck this guy. Who's this guy think he is? You know, what a moron. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, yeah. on that, on that topic though, because uh, Sean like publicly said something about this months ago on his podcast and it was just, God, the internet was full of bullshit um and uh you know some of us fell for said bullshit but sean tried to warn the world months ago no nev campbell's not in scream six and uh what <laughs> no, okay i was gonna say i okay. believed him i believe no him. yeah and it's uh but i just wanted to know what that was like for you because you are her manager you know so to have people asking you that and you tell them like dude she told me she's not fucking in it and then people are like nah dude nah nah she's lying to you bro like was that annoying or were you just like i don't give a fuck you'll find out when it comes out um well i tried to put that shit to rest by having her say it publicly because Mm -hmm. it was kind of probably going to end up being like the Halloween three Jamie Lee Curtis thing. She'll say Mm -hmm. it publicly and they'll be like, Oh no. Did you see the way she kind of snickered afterwards? Did you see Mm -hmm. she she was like, she was being sly. So what happened is we were at that same show in Arizona when that was the time that all that shit was going on, the rumors and stuff. So I said to the, I said to the interviewer guy, I said, Hey man, do me a favor. I go, there's all this bullshit online that she's in, you know, scream six. Could you, the first question, I want you to ask her that question first so we can just get it out there. And I filmed it. So he goes, oh, so, you know, so I filmed it. And then I even turned the camera on myself and went, see, and then I posted that. And then fans were like, yeah, did you see how she kind of smiled afterwards? Bastards. It's like, she's hiding something. She's hiding something. (laughs) Okay. Well, I mean, with working with her, do you know, like, because she has said in interviews, she is open to coming back for the next one. Do you like, do you actually believe that she means that? Like, if they were to, 
you know, pay her what she feels she's worth and she has earned that. Um, do you feel like that door would still be open? Yeah, absolutely. I think they'd, I think they'd have to pay her even more now, in my opinion, after yeah. kind of disrespecting her. Cause mm -hmm. now it's kind of like, we'll see, you know, if that movie doesn't do as good without her, then it'll be like, come on now. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, that's how, well, I mean, I'm not saying that's what she told me. That's what I think, you know, would you would happen, you know? Um, but yeah, I mean, and I'm, I'm reading these things about, you know, these other people saying this is to be the goriest scream ever. And it's like, it's not really what screams ever been about, you know? So what is it? Terrifier two now, or is it going to be the screams that, you know, it's like, I mean, so is that what we have to do to make up for, for that is we got to make it a gorier. I, I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't, I don't get it. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm not a fan of scream films because of the gore, you know, no, I like them no. because they're intelligent and they're, you know, they're fun. And so we'll see. I mean, it could be a good movie. I'm open to it, but you know, but you brought I'm, up Ter terrify it too. Did you, did you like it? I mean, here's the thing. <laughs> Uh, I work with all those people uh, uh, and they know that I'm not a big fan of the movies, but I thought the second one was a lot better than the first one. Uh -huh. um, it was too long. You uh -huh. know, I think I would have trimmed it by about 30 minutes, you know? Uh -huh. um, but I am not a fan of gratuitous gore. Uh, I like a good kill. Like for example, the stuff Chris does in the Halloween movies, like you, you see a good head stomp or something, you go, Oh shit. But I don't want to linger on it for two minutes. You know, mm -hmm. it's just not, I'm, I'm not into that. Not into I, I appreciate it. the art. I appreciate how good of an effects artist Damien is, but it's not my thing. I think art. The clown is a cool character. I think is a creepy character. I think it's well played by David. Um, I thought the acting in the second film was far superior to the first. I, they finally stepped it up, got better actors. Um, not that the, I thought the leads in part one were fine. It was all the other characters were like cringy the pizza shop um, boys. <laughs> yeah, dude, they were the worst. They were mm -hmm. the worst. Um, <laughs> uh, but you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm watching Damien grow as a filmmaker. And, um, I think, uh, I think there's great things to come for sure. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, if, if obviously, Hey, fucking terrifier to destroyed uh, money wise. I mean, so my opinion means nothing because they're fucking killing it. And he just got signed to WME, you know? So, um, he's doing something right. He's hitting, he's hitting a sweet spot for some, for a, a, a demographic that I'm not a part of, you know, I like horror, but like I said, that sort of gore, horror stuff is not my not my thing i'm in this I, I'm, I'm in the psychological horror i'm in you know i loved hereditary i i you know the shining session nine those are my favorite type of films you like doctor you know, sleep i love doctor sleep i oh, love yes. mike flanagan i love yes. mike flanagan's work yes. mike flanagan rules to me mike flanagan is the best horror filmmaker right now for sure thank you thank you yeah. i have been championing that and i just watched midnight mass finally a few months ago because i hadn't caught it with my wife last year mm -hmm. it's his best one of all his insane. netflix shows it's fucking incredible oh yeah. man flanagan's is a yeah. shit have you seen the director's cut of dr sleep oh it's the only one i watch yeah. now yeah it yeah, reads so like a better. fucking novel dude it's yeah. it's oh it's so good it's three hours but yeah dude fuck it the, the original cut was two and a half you know what like what's another 30 minutes plus there's a lot of story to tell there but yeah dr sleep was my favorite movie of that year and like i would honestly put that in like a top i mean christian i don't want to get into what we what we talk about when it comes to the shining versus dr sleep because i have controversy we, we have we have fun i, yeah, I like dr sleep but to me it's like it's not even in the ballpark i, the I mean i put i put that in a, a top i would put dr sleep in a top 10 for for me for my personal list i think that that movie is fucking brilliant i love that movie Mm -hmm. yeah mike's actually become a friend he's he's awesome and he is a hardcore horror nerd just like us that's mm -hmm. awesome I mean, yeah amazon yeah. just stuck just stole him from netflix yeah 
I, I saw that. And yeah. sucks to suck Netflix. I mean, he put out great content, but uh, he was getting frustrated with Netflix and he had made it clear they wouldn't put his shit out on mm-hmm. physical media and stuff. And it was just kind of like Amazon was willing to pay more and I'm sure his shit will get physical releases. So Mike went there. Yeah. Yeah. No, he's awesome. He, uh, he's actually, if you, I don't know if you, if you, you've seen the Dr. Hill video, right? Mm -hmm. He's, he's in that room filming. If you, when we pan around, he's standing there because he was nerding out (laughs) about the Dr. Hill. He even took pictures. I think I put them, I think I put the pictures in the end for him holding the head with Barbara and Jeffrey. He's, he's a big fan. He's a, um, and he's a big prop collector. He and I were were like, are you going to get him on your show? bonded. Huh? Are you going to get him on your show? You know what? Absolutely on, should. I didn't. I don't. Oh, you know, I don't even think about these things. I should. Sean, <laughs> no, Sean. Well, Come on, Sean. You're running. A, we, you're running a great. You got a great podcast. Yeah. You can get these people. I mean, trust not, me. People love. My favorite thing about your podcast is when you you two meander for an hour without ever really getting into anything. No, I'm not mm-hmm. bullshitting. That's my favorite stuff. You know. You know, it's it, that seems to be the most popular stuff. Obvi- honestly, which is odd. That's same with us when we just yeah. bullshit it's our best episodes yeah <laughs> people like it so, their attention's there i love it yeah if you t- if you tell good stories and and you're engaging i i think that that's that's really the key you know um that's you gotta get mike man i want to hear I, this I, he talked I, about I making out El- yeah he wanted to make an elm street his movie. elm street pitch i want to fucking hear what that pitch was Tell, yeah. i want to hear that pitch yeah. Okay. You know what? I will reach out to him. I will ask him if 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 he would do. I don't know how busy he is, but I actually texted with him today. In fact, he'll do. Um. It. Uh. I'll. But it's really comes down to his schedule and Chris's schedule. So mm-hmm. maybe I well, can lock him in. Chris is off filming The Exorcist right now. I mean, and he's been talking about that. I know that you're. You know, we're not going to ask you to divulge anything about that. But I mean, I just want to know. How how are you with that? Are you cautiously optimistic about that movie? Uh I'm I mean, I, I'm definitely more optimistic about that than I have been of any of the other ones that have come out the the, the last, you know, the last couple. I mean, Exorcist Three is one of my favorite movies. I love mm-hmm. Exorcist Three. Uh Exorcist Two is an abomination. Mm-hmm. Uh the other ones not not you know the two different versions not good um uh the series was great i don't know the first season the first season of the series was awesome second season it's like whoa what just happened um but uh i i think it has good potential i mean i i'm hopeful you know i'm hopeful i've seen a couple things he 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 showed me a couple things like you know pictures like like, what do you think, you know, kind of thing. But, um, and I was like, Ooh, uh, you know, but yeah. Now does that wrap in two weeks or is Chris just done in two weeks? That's a good question. I know he's, I know he's done like two days before Christmas, said, right? Yeah. 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 I think he said the 23rd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do they sign like NDA, like legitimate NDA paperwork or is it just on a, like a, don't screw like if if like chris would be shooting himself in the foot if he if he legitimately slipped and shared or told somebody and then word got out and they traced it back to him yeah for sure you could you could be sued i mean i i don't i don't know of anybody who's ever actually been sued because of stuff like that but but yeah i mean it's you know all this stuff is highly confidential and and you know um i mean but let's be fair it it goes through so many people there's so many people involved in the production of a film all the way down to people that may work in an effects shop in la that are never on set in atlanta um that has seen pictures and designs and this and that and you know it's so easy for things to slip to slip Um, yeah but fortunately you know i mean they've they've seems like things have been pretty hush hush and they yeah, started I mean, shooting. They shot, I think, for two weeks before Halloween ends started. Ellen so they Burstein did like stuff, right? I, I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Um, I'm <laughs> saying <laughs> I know they shot two weeks before Halloween ends, and then they went and did Halloween ends, and then going back mm-hmm. to to do stuff. So, 
What do you think about them including her, but not Linda? I mean, like, it does seem curious, doesn't it? You know, and I know Linda made a, a social media post last year and she said, no, they haven't reached out to me. You know, I wish them the best and everything. I just felt it was a little weird because the movie was very heavily. I mean, definitely Ellen had a, played a major role in that original film, but Reagan did too. And, and, you know, Linda seemed game to do it. I thought it was curious for them to not include her. She wants that dog stuff to be involved somehow, right? She got some dog. Come on, Sean. Be honest. You know it's true. <laughs> Shut up. She see him laughing down there. He knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> she got that dog stuff she does. It's got to be involved in everything. Maybe she got to wear yeah. the t-shirts in the movie or something. That's like part I of mean, the contract. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, this is not me saying, hey, Sean, do you know anything? No, I'm just simply asking, like, didn't you think it was kind of <laughs> weird that Ellen was a part of it and Linda wasn't? At least on first announcement. Yes. Uh, this one comes from Ian. Do you have any Horrors Holly Grounds in the works or Hollywood, ho ho Hollywood's, ho what's it called? Too many. Yeah. Hollywood's Hollywood Grounds. Hollywood's I don't have any Hollywood's. Oh, I do I have one in the works. I do. Three o'clock high um, with, that I shot. I just haven't cut because I did it with Adam the Woo at the same time and he put his out right away because that was his baby. Mm -hmm. So I told him, you know, I said, I'm going to film my own, but I'm probably going to sit on it for like a year uh, as slow as I am. And I have so many things ahead of it. So I have that one shot. Mm -hmm. I just haven't edited it. Um, I'm almost done with lost boys. Um, the one I'm dropping on Christmas is silent night, deadly night appropriately. Nice. Um, Very cool. the exorcist, the Exorcist 3, those are both shot, just need to be finished uh, editing. Um, Hereditary is shot, halfway done editing. I've been kind of picking at it. Um, I've started several episodes. I started They Live. I started Christine. I started Phantasm. I started Halloween H2O. Um were you able to get into the fenced in area, the the like at H2O where the school actually was? I've I've been in there. I just didn't okay. film like an idiot. So I've been waiting to go back. Um it's just a matter of just having the time to do it. Um you it, you can get access to it. I mean, you can yeah, you can rent a room there, but it's, it's like two thousand like, dollars a night, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's a minimum of two nights. So mm -hmm. um so you got to throw down. So it's just a matter of just having the time to do it. Cause I want to have Chris Durand come over and do it with me. Uh, and you have access to the entire, the, the entire place uh, during your stay. So, mm. so I'd probably try to knock out scream three at the same time. You yep. know, my cool. favorite, so, yeah, um, Ian, he's got a shitload in the works. My favorite yeah. episode you did is the one of that movie. I never saw the movie. I'd like to, but I think it's a little hard to kind of get your hands on. It was that movie you said, I don't think people have seen this, but it's one of my favorites. And you my told the story. Garden? I don't remember. But you told the story about arguing with oh, the guy little about darling. little darlings. Little You're trying darling. to film yeah. in the bathroom and, and the jackass <laughs> wouldn't let you in the bathroom. And then you found yeah. out, thank God you didn't go in there because it wasn't even the right one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was the, I love that. That, that 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 made one of my favorite episodes. Uh, I don't that was, know what this, so much fun to do. That one. Yeah, I, I don't know what this question is in reference to, but I'm, I'm I'm assuming I'm just unaware. Somebody was asking for you how Tom Savini is. Is something going on with Tom or? I think it just uh, means like how is Tom Savini like in person? Like is he you know? Yeah. Oh, okay. No, he's. I mean, I know he's one of those guys that fans sometimes complain about being a bit standoffish or whatever. He's, I, I've, I've interacted with him. I mean, I've known him a long time. I've been to his house, so I'm friends with him now. But as a fan, meeting him back in the day, he was always great to me. But I could see he he's one of those guys. I think. I think he's somebody that has a hard time focusing on certain, th maybe a little ADD or something. Um, but I've noticed that he kind of, when you're talking to him, he kind of looks around while, you know, maybe doesn't seem like he's fully engaging, mm -hmm. uh, but I, I don't know. I, mean, I, I have no complaints. I, right. He's a great guy as far as I'm concerned. I yeah. always wondered how much his war service 
has affected you know i always wonder if that's part of it he's always because he i read his book which was fantastic he's he's a wild dude this this broad sent him a a letter back in like 2000 about how much she loved him and he was divorced and single come on down come stay with me for a while and then he couldn't (laughs) he couldn't fly her out because he wanted to get her out the house but 9 11 happened so he had to keep the broad at the house for a few days later well, i haven't read the book i should read it so i love i'm such a tom savini fan i'd love to i met him a few times and he was always I, he was always gracious to me yeah um somebody uh this is from dan from la from no, la dan from la la dan from la la he wants to know your favorite horror soundtracks um i love the creep show soundtrack I love Fun House is one of my favorite scores. Um, Halloween 3. I love the Halloween 3 soundtrack. Um, Killer Clowns. I love that really, that Fun House Killer Clowns, that sort of carnival-y. I, I like the really theatrical like stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, not, I'm not so into the ambient type scores and um i like really kind of over the top stuff Mm -hmm. yeah are you like a big richard band fan all his empire stuff with charlie the reanimator puppet master i mean i love the reanimator score but it's you know it's literally psycho (laughs) but it's a great score um but uh yeah i mean i'm not a huge uh uh full moon fan or empire you know, I mean, this, I like some Empire stuff, like from beyond. You know, sure. But, you know, you know, this has me thinking of all of a sudden, you know, Sean, I feel like what would be great is if somehow Vinegar Syndrome would start working with you on a lot of their movies and locations, because you got to know how me up. they no hit me shit. up recently. Tell me about yeah. that. I met somebody from Vinegar Syndrome in Connecticut at that same show Mike Flanagan was at and. Jeffrey Combs and Barbara Cramlin. And he hit me up about uh, if I would ever consider doing Horrors Hall Grounds for their releases. And I said, absolutely. You know, I'm, and I just told him, I said, look, you know, um, it just needs to be something I'm a fan of. I, I, I can't fake it. I can't, I, I have to have a passion for it. Um, and I said, like, if you guys had told me you were putting out Surf 2, that's a movie I love. Mm-hmm. I absolutely would have done a surf to horrors hollow grounds that four people would have watched. Uh, mm-hmm. um, but, and I still might for my channel. Um, so I told them, I said, keep in touch with me. And you know, if you want, you know, let me know ahead of time, Hey, we're thinking of doing these movies. Are you interested in any of them? And then I'll let you know. And I've bumped into them again since, but I'm yet to get offered anything, but this all happened in the last two months i think it's in the cards for you because look i mean this is coming from me and vinegar syndrome i'm i'm I'm, I'm sure no let Mm -hmm. me tell you sean like i'm (laughs) Mm -hmm. big into the physical media world and we Mm -hmm. talk and a lot of the fans are a little fed up with scream factory not having your stuff on there like they they said your your horrors hollow grounds was going to be on the halloween 6 4k and then it wasn't it just wasn't on there yeah i got on that was a mistake um, that, that it was supposed to be, but apparently it accidentally got left off, but it got put on the packaging, I guess. It was. was, it, but, did, but, did the check still clear, though? <laughs> the check I never got the first time. Sean should be honored to be on Screen Factory. That's what they're probably telling him. Oh, uh, you know? yeah. I have no ba- bad blood with Screen Factory. It's just, you know, they've been using other people i mean and you know it is what it is i mean if if they came at me and said hey we want you to do this for this i'd be more than happy to right you know if it's something i want to do you know i turned down the last couple things they offered me um mainly well money was an issue on one of them because i wasn't even coming close to covering what it would have cost me to go make the episode right um but uh, another one was just it was a tie a couple titles i was like oh i would do that but i don't know if i have the time i'm so busy i i that's the other problem even with the vinegar syndrome guys i mean it depends on how fast they work my guess is they probably move a little slower than scream factory so maybe i'd have more time to to squeeze something in but um 
that's the problem is I, I don't want to be put, uh, I don't want the pressure of having to deliver something. You know, that's a, a lot of people. I fans actually hit me up and saying, dude, please start a Patreon, uh, a Patreon channel. We'll contribute, you know, blah, blah, blah. You should do this. You should do this. I'm like, I don't want the pressure of having to deliver. I like my YouTube channel being something that I do when I want to do it, when I have time to do it. Uh, you're not paying me for it. You enjoy it. You're getting right. exactly what you paid for, you know, <laughs> and you didn't pay. So, um, so that's, I kind of like that. Uh, and that's why, you know, if I didn't have a full-time job, yeah, maybe I would start a Patreon and really focus and pump out content like crazy, but, but I have a full-time job that pays well and, uh, I'm busy. So I do these when I can for fun. There you go. But, but guys, look, uh, Sean's about to be Team Vinegar Syndrome. I can feel it. Um, I'm going to take down the YouTube channel. It's, you're going to have to buy everything for Vinegar Syndrome. That's right. That's right. <laughs> uh, this is from It Ain't No Butterflies. Now, again, this is a stiff question, uh, but I think you're up for it. We'll see. Are there any actors you don't want to work with? And if you can, elaborate. Uh... Well, there's people I've parted ways with because of maybe we just clashed. You know, I recently parted ways with Amanda Bierce. You know, um, we were kind of doing this, I think. Um, uh, I've I've parted ways with other like Holly Marie Combs. We we decided to end that relationship. Um, you know, I'm not going to bad mouth people. But right. it just wasn't working. You know, that's the one thing that's awesome about my job is it's my own company. And I, I, if I don't want to work with someone, I don't have to, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and if you're going to be a pain in the ass, uh, you better be worth it. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> believe right. me, I work, I work with some clients that are a nightmare to work with. Mm. But if it's, if it's, if it's worth the effort, then sure. I'll deal with it. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. there you go. Um, the majestic dead. This is our last question, Sean. What is Sean's favorite feel good comfort film? Feel good comfort film. Dazed and confused meatballs, my bodyguard <laughs> fast times at Ridgemont high. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are, those are feel good comfort movies for sure. Um, uh killer clowns mm -hmm. you know uh fun just fun nonsense you know the but but like days and confused i think is kind of going back to what i was saying earlier in the discussion about being ultra nostalgic that's a movie that i watch and i relate to that mitch kramer character because i was that little kid trying to hang out with the older kids in the 70s mind you i was a little younger than him then he was a little older than me then, but I was alive in 1976. Uh, I was six years old, but I was hanging out with nine year olds. Mm -hmm. So I kind of related to that because they were, you know, and they were the ones that got me into kiss and stuff. You know, they were like the cool older kid. It was basically I moved into this house and this kid across the street named Craig was he was a he was about three or four years older than me. And, you know, he could have been like, get out of here, kid. But he brought he took me under his wing and he's like, dude, check out Kiss. Listen to this. Look at this. And I was like, oh, my it blew God. my mind, yeah. you know, and and, and uh, he's responsible for that. And it's funny. I was sitting right outside his front door the other day, looking up at the at his bedroom window where I first he first played me God of Thunder. And I was like, oh, God, I remember like I, I was just like sitting and looking going, man. If I could just go back to that moment, that magical moment, you know, um, is a beautiful thing. One thing I started doing, and I have no ETA on this whatsoever, and this is probably something that won't come out till 10 years from now. Who knows? As I lag. Mm -hmm. But I've had a lot of people <laughs> <clears throat> recently asking me to do none of so much a documentary or an episode they say do an episode 
but they want to hear my story of how I got to where I am right now. Like, you're like, dude, how did you get in the business? How did you get to be doing what you're doing? So people keep asking me to do like a, I, I call it more of a documentary, I guess. You know, they say do an episode. Well, if you want to hear the story, you want it told correctly, you know. So when I was in the old neighborhood recently, I shot a few things for that. Like, it's like, you know, here I'm here at my old house. I'm, I'm right by the old movie theater. Where I first saw Halloween. I'm, you know, I kind of, I did a little bit, you know, kind of piece it together. And maybe I will eventually tell the story of how, my lucky ass kept dumb lucking in the situations mm. that got me to be on the Unita Horror Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, guys, moment. I was going to say, guys, if you're asking that question to Sean and you, you know, like you said, it might be 10 years before you get that documentary. The first time we had Sean on, Christian asked him that question near the beginning of the episode and he elaborated. He on got that. mad at he me, though. He said, I don't want to talk about Tony Moran, <laughs> Christian. And then he begrudgingly said, I'll tell you the goddamn story. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, yep. Yep. Yeah. I'll, and he'll end up having to be a part of that story. Um, but, you know, I mean, th oh, there's another one, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, to go back to that person's question of people I, uh, I used to work with and don't get along with anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, you know, it, 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 there's a thing, you know, I mean. Yeah, I, I, I would have, I don't, you know, I, I would, I wouldn't have thought to given two shits about it, you know, but he's the one who's kind of kept perpetuating it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and prodding me. And so that's why I've, I've ever even spoken about it. It's more of an defense retaliation or whatever. Um, but like, you know, some of these other people that I've parted ways with, I'm, you know, I don't, I don't bash them. I don't talk shit about them. You know, we didn't get along. So what, you know, I'm, yeah, I don't get along know. everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Not we, all we, personalities we, clash. Clash. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So mesh, I think mesh is the mesh, word. Yeah. Right. I'm a, I'm a dumbass. Yeah. It was mesh. <laughs> I thought that. I thought that. I was like, it's mesh. It's mesh. Mesh. Clash is the opposite of that. No, same fucking thing. Or, guys, you could have, you know, to that question, Marcel, uh, he's the one that asked that question. You could have Kane Hodder come up to you in a green room and go, Why won't you represent me, bro? So it's not, sometimes it's not just people Sean won't work with. Sometimes people think Sean doesn't want to work with them. Well, not in that situation with Kane, but yeah, that, that is the case quite often. I don't want to, you know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, you know, a, a guy like Kane, like I, like I told him, dude, you're at almost every show I'm at. You're, you, you're doing well, obviously. Um, you don't need me. Um, but you know, if, there's, if, if I see somebody at a convention, I'm, of the opinion they must be represented by somebody they're there you know so i don't i'm not somebody who would approach a celebrity at a convention and go hey you want to do more of these you know mm -hmm. like some scumbags out here's there my do. business card call yeah. me yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 there's there's a guy that's infamous for that right now that that everybody hates because of that um and you know it's it's you know, we bust our asses to convince these people to do these things. And you're going to stroll up and throw a business card at them. Fuck you. Yeah, get the hell out of here. Um, but, huh? I was, saying, I was saying, yeah, get the hell out of here. Those kinds of people. Yeah. So, um, so I don't, you know, I, I don't do that. But if somebody approaches me, if a celebrity comes up to me in a show and says, Hey, you know, I don't have anybody for this or, you know, I'm, I'm not happy with my guy. Can we talk? I'll listen to him. Sure. But it's not, that's Yeah. But a lot of the times, you know, you get some of these guys, I'm not going to say any names, but you get some of these guys that, that are so played out on the scene mm. uh, and they have nothing. Maybe they have one credit 40 years ago and they, and they haven't, you know, done anything else like nothing, Tony, not, Tony even, not even like 
sea level stuff. Like they, they just don't. What did you say? Tony, Tony Moran. Moran. <laughs> I didn't don't say that. Don't talk bad about no. Tony. But, but uh, I like, Tony. I, you know, I, what's that? <laughs> you like, <laughs> I like Tony. No, I think the whole thing, I think the whole thing was a shtick. I think the whole this thing is just a, a, yeah, this is a promotional thing he and I concocted. Um, <laughs> so anyhow, I, I just those people, you know, that you see them bounce from agent to agent to agent, and it's like, you know, they've uh, there's I'm not gonna say who they are, but they hit me up all the time. Like, like there's this one dude in particular, dude. He's asked like every client I represent. Could you talk to Sean? Hey, so and so asked me if I, you know, if you'd be interested. Like, fuck you too, really? Mm-hmm. How many mm-hmm. people does this guy know? You know, um, it's like it, it, and it's it's, dude, it's like just because, I mean, it's this mentality of, oh, well, so and so can't get me booked anymore. Well, let's try this guy, or you know, he's got a lot. You know, it's like, dude, just because I got some juice because I've got big names or whatever. And, you know, I, the, it, one of my, I, this is the same promoters that are saying, no, I go ah, for you, Sean, I'll take him. You know, I, I, it, I don't, I don't, you know, and, and I think personally, those kind of clients, you know, take your, you know, that being a part of your company, kind of drop it down a little bit. You know, you want to have, you don't want the the guys that can't get booked. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I mean, for me, I want to go after the ones that have never done it. I want to mm-hmm. bring new people in that people are going to go, holy shit! Do you see who's going to be there? Not like, oh, him again. Awesome. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So I would also imagine that when you come across, you know, actors or actresses or, or anybody in the business that has bounced from manager to manager, that's probably a red flag for you. Like, yeah. I don't know, though. You seem to not mesh well with a lot of people. So, oh, dude, I mean, I'll tell you one straight out that everybody that's worked with said is the absolute biggest nightmare of all time. I've never worked with her. She hasn't hit me up. I don't know her but I've seen her in action and it's something <laughs> Beverly D'Angelo. Wow. From a turn. Yeah. Dead? Mm-hmm. No, no. Beverly uh, Nash- Nash- Randolph, I'm sorry. Nash Lampoon. I'm sorry. Yeah. Vacation. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's probably a little too, you know, up her yeah. own ass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but no, the stories have been epic, man. The stories have been epic. Like, like next level, like next really? level shit. Yeah. Is she the new so, Chevy Chase? Because it seems like Chevy's turned over a new leaf and he's having fun doing Kane's promotion, smiling, doing pod. I'm a huge Chevy Chase fan too. Yeah. So makes me happy, you know? Yeah. And he's one of those guys I was always terrified to meet because I'm such a huge fan too that I, I was like, man, I've heard so many horror stories. I right. just, I hope to God he's not a dick. And, you know, it may have a lot to do with the situations I met him in, you know, um, and, you know, he was awesome. Hell so. yeah. That's awesome. I named my dog yeah. Chevy Chase. We got a Boston Terrier. <laughs> His name is Chevy Chase Hannah. I love, I love Chevy so much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, he, he, he was great. I was stoked to finally meet him. I just met him. I know he's at Steel City Comic Con right now in, in Pittsburgh this weekend with Beverly D'Angelo. Yeah. Um, great and, city. uh, Great city. And I, that's where I met them. Like, I don't know. I think back in March, I think they were all there. The big vacation reunion. Uh-huh. So, and I had brought Jason Lively and Ethan Embry because they were both Rusty Griswolds. So that's that's the context I got to meet them in and okay. you know, meet all of them. So it was pretty awesome. Hell yeah. Well, that's, that oh, yeah. makes me happy. That's good. To, that's good to hear then. Yeah. Hell yeah. Let's end it on and a high note. Awesome to go on to Raising Canes and see it say Mary Clarkmas. I'm like, mm-hmm. isn't it great? I asked him, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Sean. I asked him. I said, "Hey, can I take the uh, the Clark standee that's uh, tied to the the sign? Like they zip tied the yeah. life size." No, nah, we can't give it to you right now. I was like, "Well, can I get it when Christmas is over?" She goes, "You could try, but I said, I'm going to try." I'm sure, it everybody's asking for it because yeah. they have two of them at my Raising Canes too, and I was like, "Oh, those are pretty on, cool." 
Are you just some some fucking some cutters late at night? I mean, I I would imagine if you went up to the GM and you talked to the GM and said, "Here, I'll pay you this amount of money if you if as soon as the season's over, you give this to me. Here's my phone number." They'll probably be like, "Yeah, sure, whatever." You you know, they're gonna pitch it. Yeah. Do you like Memoirs of an Invisible Man? It it has its moments. Got its moments. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's not a good movie, but it's you know, yeah, I don't hate it. It's funny when I when I got a, when I became a big Chevy Chase fan, I went through his. I, when I find an actor I like, I like going through their filmography. So I did that with Michael Fox, and and I was doing that with Chevy Chase, and I I watched it through the lens of just being a Chevy Chase film without realizing that was John Carpenter, mm-hmm. and uh, I just found that interesting. And then I What's watched your this favorite Chevy Chase film. Favorite Chevy Chase film? It's it's probably Fletch, but. Um, the first vacation is really, I mean, I know Christmas vacation is the world renowned one today, but I, I think, I think the first vacation is un unequivocally just hysterical on so many levels. And it's mean with the cousin Eddie stuff. Like my daddy says, I'm the best kisser. Like it's, it's gross. Yeah. Like I think <laughs> the first, I, I, I take that back. I got to go the first vacation. I love Fletch. I think Fletch is smart and witty and good. Yeah. Uh, oh no, no. I'm lying to you. I'm lying to you, Sean. The most underrated comedy, my wife, we fucking love Funny Farm so much. Funny Farm one, is so fucking good. Um, but I, I like mean, some, I, of, some of his 90s shitty films I like too, like Cops and Robertsons. Uh, they're terrible, but I can't help but watch them because I love Chevy. <laughs> I just love Chevy. Yeah. I don't know what my... I, I'd have to say, but then again, he's not the main star, but my favorite chevy film has to be caddyshack oh god um and then let me ask you this though sean who is the star of caddyshack in your eyes to me without a doubt the king of kings it's rodney dangerfield i love rodney so much in that film but then the judge is so yeah ted knight is i mean it's it's a complete ensemble i mean you got bill murray i mean i mean yeah it's there's no real star of that film. I guess the star is the main kid. kid. Was yeah. it something McKeon? What's his name? Um, is that Michael McKeon? I, I, it might be. I don't know the kid's name. I but... think Michael McKeon is his name. Um, and I met him and it was very disappointing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was very uptight. What? Um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, three amigos. Oh, God, phenomenal. Three amigos is good. Um, I love, Seems like old times. Uh, I love foul Spies play. Spies like us. It's foul play. Oh, foul Spies play. like us is great. Nothing but trouble. A, a sleeper. That's a mm. sleeper. Uh, mm-hmm. Chevy Chase it. film. Dude, Dan Ac- um, Dan Aykroyd is a fucking monster. Like this- <laughs> Fletch I didn't two. Re- Even Fletch two. Fletch two is good. I mean, go on. I only have that um, on laser disc. That's the only way I can watch Fletch two is my laser disc. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm a big Chevy Chase fan too. Um, did you yeah. watch the Chevy Chase show in 1993 when it aired? Yes, I and did. Now, can you, all right, this is just like, if you, if you're not, if you're not interested in no more horror, goodbye, leave the stream or leave the show. <laughs> Thank you for watching. But I got to ask this. Can you take me through your mental state as you're watching that show? Because I've watched documentaries and I've seen clips about how bad it really was, but in yeah. the moment, did you say to yourself like, Oh God, Chevy, what are we doing here? Yeah, no, for sure. I was like, I was so pumped for it. Cause I loved him on SNL. I loved his movies. And I'm like, he is going to kill this. He's going to be the new King of late night. Dude. It was brutal. It was brutal. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, it, it was, it, there's a, there, go check out the documentary on YouTube. It, it's, I, I haven't seen the documentary, but I am familiar with the Chevy Chase show. And yes, it's pretty they, fucking bad. They break it down and he just was not good at, he's a physical comedian. He's so no, good at the falling and shit. And, yeah. And well, that's the funny thing that you mentioned that like my basic answer is Christmas vacation. That's my favorite Christmas movie period. So like, amen, and amen I, me too. And I yeah. watch that probably two times every December. It's one of those I watch like right at the start of the season and then right around Christmas. Um, but like they tried, I was going to, you mentioned the physical comedy, that requel vacation with Ed Helms. Like I actually thought that movie was pretty funny, but the worst part about that movie is the inclusion of Chevy Chase and Beverly D'Angelo because it felt so forced 
and nothing that Chevy Chase did in that movie was funny. It Bullshit. was liter- no, no. When he sprays when he humor. sprays the, the the thing on the guy taking a shit in the that, bathroom. Okay, okay, it's that, hysterical. That's, that's, that's funny, the funniest part of the movie. That's, that's funny, but they do this whole shit. It's all these like practical fucking physical gags, like 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 oh he's hitting himself over and over with the fucking that's door Chevy, or whatever. Though. Yes, but it didn't work, man. Like I yeah. was just like this. Just feels forced. Like it's just. I don't know. I love it when Chevy goes to grab a pool <laughs> stick and he just fucking starts. They're all flying everywhere. I love it. I, can't, I just I love just, when they're talking about uh, would you give your dad a good night rim job or something like that? It's just, <laughs> it's just disgusting. I don't know, Sean. Did I mean? Did you? What did you think of the re cool? I guess you would call it a vacation. Um, I didn't think it lived up to to the original by any oh, means fuck but no. but it, it it was it was entertaining um and it, i i i knew Redis had a cameo um but i i didn't expect his i don't i don't remember what the line was but i remember it, it was really funny what his line was um i remember just like oh oh my god i didn't expect Redis to make me laugh um <laughs> uh but yeah it it was all right. You know what? I think the problem is with with Chevy, older Chevy. I mean, I know he was. I I okay. I loved him in Hot Tub Time Machine. Oh, oh great! He was great. Great, yeah. great movie. Great fucking yeah. movie. One of my favorites, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, nice. and uh, but you know, it seems like with a lot of these, when comedians get older, and I've I've noticed this with Chevy, and he, I think he's finally found with stuff like hot tub time machine and on uh, community he found like a way to make reinvent old chevy you know because what i think is there was a thing with him there was a cockiness to him that part of that cockiness was he was a handsome guy and when that went away and the hair started to go and it, it, it started to not work, you know, because there was, because he was this like handsome, cocky leading man, you know, and, and it, it, it unfortunately age, you know, I remember uh, an example is I remember seeing years ago when all the Monty Python guys were still alive, they did this Monty Python live thing where they Mm -hmm. did all their old bits live. And as old men, those bits didn't work in my opinion. Like a lot of them didn't work. And Mm -hmm. it's just, there's a sadness to that. You know, I mean, you can't all be Ted Knight, you know, Ted Knight is a guy that got funnier as he got older. You know what I mean? Some, Mm -hmm. sometimes it depends on where your comedy comes from. And I think a lot of it was Chevy's look Mm, for sure. You know, so yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Chevy Chase. I, I Chevy Chase. Christian named his dog Chevy after Chevy Chase. I named and, my dog Carl after Carl from The Walking Dead simply because I knew I'd yell at him a lot and I'd yell at him like Rick Grimes. So that is exactly yeah. what I'm at. Yep. And I named my dog Buddy after Buddy Ravel from Three O'Clock High and there Buddy Repperton from Christine. <laughs> there you go. Hell yeah. My, my, pug's name, my pug's name is Owen Hart. I don't know why. I love... <laughs> And I love, I'm a Bret Hart fan. And I, I love the Hart. I'm a big wrestling fan. So I named my pug Owen Hart, but he looks like an Owen. Owen's you, I like mean, a really good name for a dog. You don't you know? know what it's like to tell people your dog's name is Carl. And then like, when you explain it to them, like, no, I did it because like, I knew I'd be like, Carl all the time. And like, and they're like, oh yeah, that's kind of funny. Like that works. I'm like, yeah, he's a little shit. He's a beagle in a lab mix. So he literally can't help himself. He gets into everything. So I knew I was going to have to be yelling Carl. I love human names. Human names are awesome yeah. for dogs. <laughs> I think it's great. Sean, when are cool. you get you some more dogs, man? You need to have like a ranch of those little uh wiener dogs, man. You need like seven or eight of them. Come on, Sean. Well, I don't know if you saw my post that I did right before I came on. I I, uh, I, I posted this. Um, this is uh from today. Nay and I went to uh we went to Pet Smart and got the pictures of the dogs with uh with Santa. <laughs> That is great. Hell yeah. Did they behave? Were they good? Yeah, they surprisingly did. Yeah. I'll be damned. I think this one's funny because, like, he looks like he's asleep, this guy. 
<laughs> Look at that. <laughs> so anyway, so did, did, does Nay ever go to like cons with you and stuff, or does she stay yeah, back? While almost you're everyone. Yeah, because oh, wow. we okay. yeah because we work together. So she she works almost every convention I do. Sometimes we split up, and she goes to a different one if mm-hmm. we have you know like a crazy weekend with multiple shows going on. But we usually travel together. Usually, Christian, we got to yeah. get on convention all stars. We're on that payroll. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's something serious. <laughs> yeah, we want that health insurance, all of it, vision, dental, all of it. So. <laughs> Well, Sean, I know I speak for both of us when I say you're doing good. We're happy. You're living the lap of luxury in Orange County. You got everything you need. <laughs> got the vinegar syndrome deal coming in. <laughs> Business is good. Dude, when the vin- vinegar syndrome money starts rolling in, forget about it. Forget about it. He'll never it. come on this show again. Forget never come about on this it. show again. You won't even be able to get near me. No. <laughs> no. Hey, Sean, can you come on the show? Talk to vinegar. <laughs> you got to go through vinegar. <laughs> Yep. All right, Sean. Hey, man, we really appreciate you coming in and hanging out with this man. A great conversation. Nice, chill conversation. It was great. I had a great time. And um, I look forward to hopefully down the road we get you back on again and we just talk about right. who's pissing you off. And we, we said it last time and we stuck true to it. We said, hey, Sean, we're going to get you back on. And when we actually like someone, we mean that. We want him to be back on. We would have had Sean on earlier, guys, but he's busy. Uh, yeah, my well, dumb ass reached out to him in October. Uh, don't reach out to Sean Clark in October <laughs> if you want to collaborate. It's not going to work. Yeah. So it's a tough month. It's a tough yeah, month. It is. Mm-hmm. December and January are definitely the easiest months for me. That's when mm-hmm. things chill out a little bit. So. Mm-hmm. That's why let's I'm, get, yeah, well, let's get some get food some reviews content. going on again, Sean. I miss the food reviews. What's going on with that? That was COVID, man. That was being stuck mm. at home. Yeah, but come on, it was good stuff. I haven't tried the blueberry syrup though. You didn't really can. You didn't really sway me. You it's know not what I mean? Good. I'm a big fan of dried apricots. So mm. look, he's got them right yeah. there. Let's go. Yeah, so, like the, there's a good consistency, and they're nice and. Mm. There you go. They're those not are very actually fattening. good. Those are actually good, unlike raisins. I, I'm sorry if you guys like raisins. I think they're disgusting. I think they're an abomination. Dried apricots. Apricots, apricots. They're good. They're sweet. They're sweet. Yeah. They're good. Yeah. They're good. Yeah, I munch on these when I'm sitting here working. I get hungry. I just grab this little bag. You know. Yeah. Well, hey, Life's Sean. Better. We hope that, uh, you know, you, I know that you're busy this time. Of, you know, well, you, you're not as busy this time of year, but I know you're always busy in some form or fashion. So, I mean, thanks for coming on. I mean, we hope you have obviously a, a great Christmas season, holiday season, you know, and, uh, obviously we'll talk as soon as we're done recording right here, Don't forget but to uh, tune into this crap. Hold on. Let me yeah. See and give him the plug guys. The thing with two. There heads. it is right there. <laughs> I, told, I told Nick one of these days, I'm going to, I'm going to see you next time we get Sean, if he can just check, see what Chris Nelson's up to. Maybe he can, I want to talk to him. Maybe, about return... maybe, maybe want... after the exorcist, maybe I'll... after the exorcist. Well, Sean, I want to talk to Chris about return to living dead three, you know, cause he worked on that. Like I'm such a big fan of that. I, I think we talked about that on the very last episode. Did, I they haven't did. seen. seen I haven't, they did. Not it's the last. Yeah. Okay, I haven't seen the yeah. very last. The last one I saw was the one before that. I think. Oh, Christian, yeah. you'll love it. It's like two and a half hours long, and there's a lot of the meandering that you love. So you yeah. would love the episode. My, my yeah. favorite now, somebody is somebody asked when, about Return of the Living Dead Part Three, and he talked about the the skinny zombie he did up, who was really a homeless guy that we assume man. is probably dead because he's Dude. never. Yeah. You know. mm-hmm. I'm such a fan of those Return of the Living Dead movies. That'd be great. I, I can't wait to hear that then. Yeah. Okay. I I could keep going on, but thank you guys for listening. We love y'all. This has been a production of the You Need a Horror Podcast. You need it. We got it. Thank you for listening.